I'm adding this one little piece to the front of the video because as I was editing the rest of the video that I've already done, I forgot to mention that there are certain feats associated with crafting. And if you go into your main menu under character, down to feats, extracurricular activities, crafting, it has its own little section. Uh, you can see I have Smelting Apprentice, Smelting Artisan, and it's an art, which during the video you'll see me actually get those. She did not have any crafting feats to begin with, but I forgot to go over the feats menu. And just to briefly show you, you will get different feats based on whether you're doing alchemy or processing or etching. Some of them do come with a little extra gold that they give you. You will spend a lot more gold than what they're going to give you, though. And cooking will go over in the video. But I did just want to add this to the front just to uh, be sure everyone is aware that if you want to go for any of the feats or at least see what feats are available that you can get, then it is in your uh, feats menu under extracurricular activities and it has its own section crafting. Now on to the main video. Hi Terra fans, this is Terra Solo Gamer. In this video we're going to be talking about crafting. Now you did hear me talk quite a bit about crafting when I did the video to get to life level 60 very quickly so that you could get that loose cannon title. Uh, this is going to go a little more in depth into the crafting. Now I noticed when I did that video, I sometimes have a tendency to switch the words crafting and enchanting around. So if you hear me talking about enchanting, Unless I am specifically going into something concerning enchanting, I actually probably mean crafting. And if I make that mistake again, I'll try to correct myself if I happen to notice it. But this video, to avoid any confusion, is about crafting. Now, I'm using my warrior because um, my top 13 characters are one of each class, so I try to focus on all of them. And five of them are each masters in a different craft, which is one thing I always recommend to people. If you have multiple characters, go ahead and make um, each of them different or masters in different crafts. That helps you to craft a lot more stuff whenever you need to do it. And because I do have five masters in different crafts, I can craft anything I want. Now, some of my other characters are also masters and or artisans in some of these crafts. So I do a lot of crafting. Uh, honestly, I, I'm really happy about this video because uh, crafting... Uh, gathering, enchanting, fishing, some of my favorite things to do in the game. Love those things. Crafting is a great one to do. A, a nice thing to do to relax after a long, stressful day at work. Uh, forget about all your responsibilities and all your, your stressors and whatever and just chill. And so today we will be talking about crafting. And But she is my own, out of my top 13 that I focus on, she's the only one who as yet has done no crafting at all. So she'll be the best one to work on with this because all of her crafting skills are one or zero or whatever it is. Now, before we actually get into the process of crafting and some of the other stuff, I wanted you to meet two characters in the game. Now, one of my extra level 65 characters, you know, who's just a, an extra character, I have recently deleted and started a new character who's currently level 17, just finished Stepstone Isle, Hasn't done anything else in the game. And I went in and I checked. These two people I'm about to show you are present uh, if that level 17 character goes to meet them. But they do not have the quest showing that you're going to see. So I don't know at what point or at what level or whatever criteria it is that causes these two people you're about to see to show up. So if you're low level and you go looking for him, you don't see him, you may just have to wait. Now, my warrior here is level 65, has not yet done any crafting. So I have already checked. The quests are available for her. These are specific crafting quests. So I, I normally recommend to people anyway that before they start into crafting some of the other stuff, go ahead and focus on all of your... Um, quests and things, get yourself to level 65, and then work on these other things. But of course, it's your game. You have fun with it. Everyone plays the way they want to play. If you want to get into crafting when you're level 20 or something, if it lets you do it, go ahead. It's up to you. 
Uh, but you can see we are in Kayator, the city of Kayator. Let me go out on the map. Out on the map. Mm. I forget how to do this. Look, look. There we go. Yeah, th there's the world map. We are currently standing in the city of Kayator. And there we go. And you can see where uh, on the little, like, southwest corner, you, you can see the little blue icon. We're inside the Chamber of Artisans, okay? And, and, I, and I initially started her intentionally at the teleport platform because if you teleport to Kyator or if you fast travel to Kyator, you're going to be at the teleport platform. So you saw how we got there. Now we're looking at this Etch Master right there, Kundra. And you can see she has a yellow quest marker over her head. I'm going to talk to her. Stretching etchings one. Okay. Now I'm not going to do the etching one at the moment. But if you do this quest, uh, especially if you really want to get into etching first, uh, you end up with either one or two free etching designs that she gives you as part of the quest. Okay? And, and that's why I'm showing her to her. Because you get... Uh, at least one free design, maybe two. I can't remember for sure. So that is where she is in the Chamber of Artisans here in Kayator. If you want to go look for her. And again, I don't know at what point she shows up. Because apparently for extremely low level people, she she's here. But on my level 17 that I just tested a few minutes ago, she does not have the quest available. So you may have to wait till a higher level, maybe even 65. I don't know at what point. But I wanted to be sure you know where to find her in case you want her. I'm going to grab that just because it's ready. Nothing to do with the video. And now I'm going to go to Velika. You know, world map right here. We were in Kyator. That's where we saw the Etching Master in the Chamber of Artisans. Now we're going to head to Velika. I have Elite status, so I can just fast travel. If you don't have Elite status, take a Pegasus to Velika. However you got to get there. So I can show you another person. And when I show you this other person, and we, you can see we're in Velika, we, we're at the Pegasus platform, I'm heading this way. I'm heading straight up to the statue of Velik. I'm going around the corner here. If you watch the map in the upper right hand corner, you will see where we are. Okay, now I'm in this little side alley. Right by this spot where we got like a merchant, a uh, crystal merchant, citizen, whatever, specialty store. And you see this guy here, an adventurer, Chiffon. He has a little quest marker over his head. And it was just covered in one of my other videos, and especially since my videos are for new people primarily, or people who haven't played that much. Um, anytime you see an exclamation point above someone's head, that's the start of a quest. If it's red, it's a main storyline quest. If it's yellow, it's a side quest. If it's green, it's a reputation quest with one of the local factions. If you see a question mark, that means you're already working on that particular quest, and that's sort of a checkpoint along the quest, certain part of it that you have to, to check in before you can proceed with the rest of the quest. And then if you see an asterisk above their head, that's the end of the quest. You're getting ready to get your final reward for completing the quest. So, red, mainline story quest. Yellow, side quest. Green, reputation quest. Exclamation to start the quest. Question mark to continue the quest. Asterisk to complete the quest. So, we're going to check on his little quest. All right. Uh, okay, that has to do with a different thing if you see him and you're not doing the quest. You see the quest marker down at the bottom says Santia's Workshop. I don't suppose you're on your way to the Creation Workshop in Velika, are you? I'm waiting for a weapon from them. Do you think you could stop in and ask Santia when it will be finished? Only if you happen to find yourself going that way, of course. And then, <coughs> excuse me, you can see we can select an optional reward. So we're going to end up getting either a free design to create Kabbalah ingots, Shadsteel ingots, Norsteel ingots, or, or Galborn ingots. 
and I am going to choose the Kabbalah ingot. Pretty useful when you do Kabbalahs. Now you see he no longer has a quest marker, but my quest tracker thing on the right hand side uh, is telling me to meet Santia in the, cre in the creation workshop. And if you look on the map, uh, you can see where the creation workshop area is, and you can see that there's now a yellow question mark, quest marker there, which means that's where I need to go to continue with my quest. A couple different ways you can get there. I'm going to go around this way. And again, I wanted to show you these two people first so that you could choose one to grab yourself a, a free design without having to buy it. It's free. Why not? And also, if you remember nothing else about this video later when you're getting ready to get into crafting, if you can remember to go find one of those two people, uh, the quest itself actually walks you through how to do crafting. So, again... Just, uh, even if you don't remember anything else at all from this video later on and you're starting to do crafting, you're like, oh, I don't remember how to do it. Go find one of these two people, do the quest for crafting, and it will teach you, walk you through the steps of how to do crafting, which is what we're actually getting ready to do. All right, so we're going to see her. And she says the workshops are available for everyone to use. Click to continue. Oh, Bellix left. Well, never mind. I completely forgot about Chiffon's weapon. I'm absolutely swamped, though. It would really help me out if you could lend me a hand. Here, take this Zer Metal Ore and get materials and a design from that merchant and then do the processing for me. Don't worry, I'll make the actual weapon and it won't take long. But it'll go much faster if the Zer Metal ingot was already processed. And then you tell her that you'll go talk to Varisha. Okay, and now our you can see at the lower right hand corner, she gave us some zero metal ore. Now I can go talk to Barisha because she now has a yellow question mark marker for the quest over her head. She's my next step in the quest. You come to the right place. The crafters in Belica are the finest. Now, anytime you're doing a quest like this and you can see, we know we're doing Sentia's workshop. I need to select Sentia's workshop. I don't need to go into the craft shop. Not just yet. Okay, I'm in charge of materials and design. I'm processing a stone. All you need is a stone, a kit, and a design. You can gather stones or buy them from the brokerage, and you can buy kits and designs from merchants. Look at that. She's doing my job for me. She's telling you right there, because I'm going to tell you all that anyway. I see that you need to make a zero metal ingot. You'll need a zero metal ore and a craft kit. Since it's your first time here, the craft kit is free. So now moving on to something to process ore. Lower right corner, you see she gave us 15 craft kits. Now we'll walk over to Womar here, because I can see that my quest is continuing with him. And again, we don't want to go into his shop, we, because we have the quest available that we're working on, Santia's workshop. We want to go into the quest. Designs, designs, I'm up to my eyeballs and designs. You look rather plaid. Eh, design merchant humor. You wouldn't get it. Anyhow, here's the design you'll need. So now he gave me a design for a Zer Metal ingot. And if we look at our quest marker on the right, it tells us, learn the design from Walmart by selecting it in your inventory. Look, the game's doing the job for me. This is so easy. All right, so I'm going into my main menu, character, inventory. Whenever you get a new design, you're going to find it under the thing that looks like a box. That, the, that, that part of your menu that's highlighted up there it looks like a box. And I think it was the Zer Metal he gave us. And you can see it said Task for Sentia's Workshop is complete. I didn't give me anything else yet. And now it tells me to process the Zer Metal Ore to make a Zer Metal Ingot. Now, um, I do want to show you real quick. You can see where I'm standing there in the workshop. Every one of the major cities or the capital cities has a workshop area. I think a few years ago, when I first started playing this game, you had to be in a craft shop to, to actually do crafting. I can't remember for sure. Now you can craft no matter where you're standing, as long as you have all the materials, which includes the design already learned, the craft kits, and the ores or whatever it is that you're processing. 
And again, the craft kits is it now you will have to find the best place to find them is one of these workshop areas in one of the capital cities to buy craft kits if you're out of them, because you will need craft kits for almost everything. Um, there are a few tiny specialty merchants in some of the larger cities that aren't the capital cities, but I honestly don't remember for sure, because I normally just go to one of the capital cities if I need more craft kits. And I usually keep some extras in my bank just because I usually buy too many by mistake. Oh, done the wrong thing. Now, it says to go ahead and craft the ore. Under character, crafting. That's where we're going. Now, if you take a look at her, just to show you real quick. Whoops. Uh, smelting, my skill is one out of 500. Processing, one. Alchemy, one. Etching is one. Cooking, one. This is why I chose her to do this, because she has absolutely zero experience whatsoever. No crafting at all. Now, I have to figure out. Let's see, I'm making ingots. Okay. So it's under smelting, which is a very good uh, crafting skill to have. A lot of people recommend that as their first uh, because of the enchanting materials, uh, golden derricks and golden plates, which you can make and then sell through the trade broker and stuff, especially if uh, a lot of people are out there enchanting. If you've got an enchanting event going on, like right now we have a storm cry enchanting event going on. A lot of people are buying them. So some people recommend this uh, for making some extra money by crafting all of these once you get the uh golden talents that which drop from all kind of places so just one recommendation that a lot of people make uh that smelting is a good craft to start with if you're trying to make uh some extra money through the trade broker by crafting enchanting materials all right but let's move on i, I have a tendency you all, if you've seen my videos you, have, you know i have a tendency to go off in all kinds of tangents different directions so I'll, I'll try to keep a little on track anyway so we're under ingots we're under zero metal ingot the uh, task, and b before I go any further, lower part of the screen where it says remaining production points. Uh, I covered production points in my gathering video. And they are very important to gathering and to crafting. And I want to point it out now so that once we start doing some crafting, I want you to remember to watch those numbers because the green number on the left is how many production points I have available right now. That white number on the right is the maximum amount of production points I can have at any given time. Now, the green one on the left, 4,300 right now, it'll go down once we start doing some crafting. With that number, it constantly regenerates at a certain pace. I think if I get down to zero, it normally takes me about 24 hours for that to go all the way back up to max. I, I had recently seen somebody mention in Discord or something that takes 36 hours. That's one of the things you can just test yourself. Get yourself to zero, and if you're not doing much the next day, just check it and see when it comes back to, back to max. And I have no idea if there's a difference on the regeneration between whether you don't have elite status and if you do have elite status, which I have elite gold, and we'll, we'll get into the buffs and stuff later, which that plays a little part. But always remember, those production points... If you get down to zero or even just a lower number than what you need to craft, you will not be able to craft. And and I'll show you some other stuff for that later, uh, which I also covered in the gathering video. But if you look at the uh, top part of it there, craft item, zero metal ingot, which is what we are trying to okay, I hit my A button so I can highlight it. The zero metal ingot there, it costs me five production points. So every time I craft one, I'm going to use up five of those production points down there. And you see, we, we had to learn the design first. And I showed you how to do that going into your menu. All you do is select it, and, and it lets you learn it. The materials we need to craft this are shown right here. We have zero metal ore. It shows 10 out of 10, which means the number on the right is how many you must have to craft one time. And the one on the left there shows me how many I have in my inventory. You might have a million of them in your bank. If you don't have it in your inventory, that's not going to do any good. You got to go pull it out of the bank. It has to be in your inventory on your person before you can craft. So I have 10 out of 10. So I have enough zero metal ore. And then the craft kits, which you buy from these merchants here inside these crafting areas. I need 15. And I have 15. Standard elementary school fraction you have 15 out of 15 if i had 50 of them then it would show me that i had 50 out of 15 you know so 15 is how many i must have in order to craft one 
and the number on the left is how many I have in my inventory. Now, for some things, when you are crafting, you may or may not want to use an additive. We'll get to that later, but if you see where it says use additive, it is not required. That is something we'll probably get to in a little while later, but that's something that you can... Yeah, I don't have any for this at the moment for smelting. That's something you can use to increase the possibility of a crit. If you do a crit, uh, in fact, you see on the right of the screen there, using additives enhances your crafting results. Each crafting attempt consumes one additive. So if you have some additives and you want to use them while you're crafting, depending on the level, we'll get into that later, it will increase your chances for a crit, which gives you more of the items you're crafting, but you don't have to use an additive. Okay, so right now we can go ahead and craft. We don't need an additive. It's just an extra potential bonus if you have some available and if you want to use them. Okay, I've seen people ask that in the thing. Where do I get additives? Do I have to have it? No, you don't have to have it. It just gives you a slightly better chance to, to get a bonus material. Okay, all of my yakety yakking aside there. We do need to craft one zero metal ingot. You can see down at the bottom of the screen. Uh, on that fact, um, at the bottom of the screen, it says X for crit reward. I'm going to hit the X. And you can see normally we craft one zero metal ingot each time. But if I get a crit, it's going to give me two zero metal ingots. You see the number change? So I'm going to hit the X again. Now it goes back to one. That's standard. If I hit a crit, it's telling me that it'll give me two of them for that one strike. Okay, but at the bottom, and, and of course, if you're on PlayStation, the menu should look the same, and it'll tell you what buttons you need to hit. Uh, I'm on Xbox, so these are the buttons you use on Xbox. Now, I have to hit A for crafting, as it says in the bottom, so I hit A. And this is the uh, little animation we get now, and it shows me crafting it. Task is complete for my thing, and now you can see... I was already showing you these numbers because I had to use them to craft the first one. Now my zero metal ore, I have zero. I'm out of zero metal ore. But you see the 10 on the right, which is telling me I need to have 10 if I want to craft one. Craft kits, I have zero in my inventory. I'm out of them. But it tells me I have 15. So anytime you get ready to craft something, you can go into your crafting menu, look at it just like this, and you'll know, oh, I have to have 10 zero metal ores and I need 15 craft kits. And, of course, if you want to craft a hundred of these zero metal ingots, then you would look and be like, okay, so I'm going to need a thousand zero metal ore and 1,500 craft kits. Okay, so you can go ahead and plan ahead on your crafting. And if you look down at the remaining production points, I now have 4,295 production points out of my original 4,300 that I did have because I've used five of those points up to craft this one. And 4,300, again, is the maximum production points I can have. I still got plenty of production points at the moment, but just to show you, we did use five. Okay, now, they told us to craft that, and now, remember I mentioned the asterisk. Anytime you see the asterisk, that's the end of a quest. You've completed it. It will give you another design. Just you can try something else. Choose what you wish. Um, and, and I think this is where I actually do get the free one. It, it told me to select one earlier. I'm still going to go with Kabbalah Ingot. Ta-da! Okay, we completed our quest. Now, during the quest itself, we had already gotten one type of ingot. I forgot already what it was. Uh, but now she gave me a free design for Kabbalah Ingots. So I'll just go ahead and, before I learn it, um, I do, whoops. Sorry, that move. There we go. Uh, I do want you to look at the description for the Kabbalah, for the design. This is a design. Once you learn it, you learn it permanently. Uh, and you'll always be able to, to, to use that particular design and craft that particular material. But, but I do want to show you, anytime you pick up a design, it tells you the recipe right there that it takes 10 Kabbalah ore and 15 craft kits. Just below that, it says for level one or above, which is most of them you can actually craft from level one. Uh, you can't trade it, can't be stored in a guild bank. 
use the Zion to enforce my skill. And it tells you down there smelting. It, that's the type of craft it is. And what the production point cost is, which is five production points. Okay, now this one, because it's for level one or above, anyone can use it. We'll, we'll be probably getting one later. Now, I've just learned to design. So if I go into my crafting, oops, ingots. Okay, Kabbalah ingot. I've learned how to make it. You can see that now it shows me what it would take me to craft a Kabbalah ingot. Zer metal ingot was the other one we already learned. Now, when I go down to Shad Steel ingot, you'll notice it says you've not learned this recipe yet. So if you are going into your crafting menu and there's something you think uh, that you want to go craft, when you see that message, you've not learned this recipe yet, that tells you right there, oh, I have to go buy the design or the recipe or whatever you want to call it. And you can see right next to, right there where I highlighted Shad Steel Ingot, right next to it, skill needed is zero. If you look up at the top, my smelting basic skill, top left, right under the big word crafting, smelting basic skill is three out of 500. So that little quest I did, I actually gained three, uh, basically XP towards smelting crafting. Now, you gain those XP for each individual crafting skill you're going to. So if I go to processing, I'm still only one out of 500. I haven't alchemy one one i haven't learned anything for the others so that when you're increasing your skill level for crafting it only counts towards the particular craft you're working on okay you see that under break up at the top left smelting basic skill three out of 500 and it tells me again under shad steel ingot because i have not yet learned a recipe the skill needed is zero which means i already have at least a zero skill so I can actually go buy that design and I can learn the skill right now. No problem. And it does tell me, we're going to the skill game in a minute here, I think. Okay, skill, North Sea ingots, ingots. Okay, so for ingots, you, you can be, have never crafted smelting before. You can go ahead and get the designs and learn them immediately. Okay, here's a good one. Uh, Golden Derricks. Now, let me just continue this way. G uh, Golden Derrick, the skill needed is 500. We'll probably get a little more into this in a little bit. But right now my skill is smelting basic. Three out of 500. I can get to 500 by doing a bunch of this enchanting and whatever. But when I get there, I will still be basic until I take a special test to become an artisan, which we will definitely see in this video because it's one of the main purposes of teaching this. So, but whenever you see skill needed 500, that actually means artisan level if you're going to try to buy the design for it or the recipe for it, depending on what it is you're getting. So don't be fooled when you get up to smelting basic 500 and you see a design that skill needed is 500, you can probably buy the design, but you won't be able to learn it. Because when you see that on there, it actually means that you need to be artisan level 500 in order to learn that particular design. And you can see it says skill gain is plus five. Now, one of the things I wanted to do, okay, we, we, we did a quick little uh, crafting session there based on the quest that we just did. The quest is done. We've completed it. We got a couple of free designs out of it. We didn't have to go buy them. But now what I want to do, because I honestly don't know, I am going to fast travel back to Kyotor just to see if that other one is still available. Because there's a possibility that now that I ha have started with crafting and done one crafting quest, maybe the person won't be there. I don't know. But either way, I like Kaya Tor when it comes to crafting. So I'm going to head to the Chamber of Artisans anyway to continue on with the rest of our uh, crafting. And moving along. Alright. Oh. I think I... Yeah, I still see her on the map in the Chamber of Artisans. We may get some more free designs just because... Uh, 
it looks like they're still available there. Cool. Now, the one we're going to is for etching, which is another crafting skill. And actually, the first character I ever made in this game was a few years ago when they first started on console was my Berserker. And she actually learned, I learned uh, crafting from this etch master right here from this particular quest. And um, one thing I'll point out to you right now, because when I was doing it, and at the time, I kind of noticed it says something when I got to that point. I was like, eh, whatever, I don't even know what they're talking about. One thing I'll point out now, and I'll mention it again later, when we're doing these crafting skills, you have your basic, then you can move up to artisan, then you can move up to master. You can only be an artisan in one craft at a time. And you can only be a master in one craft at a time. So if you're a master of something, you can't be a, a master of anything else unless you manually do the process to lower your skill level in one particular craft, and then that clears you up to go to a different craft and become an artisan or a master in that one. Now, you can be a master in one and an artisan in another. Quite a few of my characters have master in one, artisan in another. That's no problem. But obviously, if you want to be a master in one, you need to become an artisan in that skill first, or that craft first, then get up to master before you'll be able to become an artisan in the second one. Because, of course, if you're working on becoming a master in this one, and right now you're an artisan, in the second one, you can't become an artisan, because you can only be an artisan in one craft. So the one that you know you're going to be master, be sure you work that one up to master first, then do your artisan. Uh, of course, you can, you can do all of them to level 500 basic. So, you know, several of my characters have Master in one, Artisan in another, and then the other three crafts are level 500 basic. You know, so that's not a problem. Just, just extra, man, I'll probably go over that again later. But this quest we're going to do here is Stretching Etchings. Only the exceptional experience can etch. Coming to me is a good start. I can improve your skills quickly. So are you ready to learn? And I'm going to accept the quest. Scope of, su of subjects one must learn to imbue weapons with magic is unimaginably vast. Diverse technologies must be applied to achieve desirable results. Etching is but one of these applications. Okay, and you, right there it says I'm done with it already. It's got an asterisk. Let me see. It's been a while since so I've done this. Oh, okay. That, that, that was apparently some kind of error. Let's start. Yes, I'm ready. Let's get some money. Okay. Okay, that was stretching etching one. That was just her explaining to me about crafting. And it gave me a few little gold. So now moving on to stretching etchings two. You can see it's the start of a quest because it's an exclamation point. Fundamental materials when etching are crimson essence crystal, earth essence crystal, and azure essence crystal. You can gather crimson essence crystal from a crimson essence, earth essence crystal from an earth essence, an Azure Essence Crystal from an Azure Essence. Go to Activities, Gather in the Achievement menu for details. First, collect the following materials, and then I'll teach you the basics of etching. I accept that. All right, now this is telling me stretching etchings too. I probably should not. You won't get anywhere about sitting still get moving. Okay, so we can't move into stretching etchings too because we have not yet completed, completed stretching etchings one and what she was telling me is what i have explained actually in my gathering video if you want more details about the gathering part uh, you can go to the gathering video but to show you briefly if you go into feats extracurricular activities gathering because gathering is very closely tied to to crafting for a lot of these things Let's see, let's see if we can just find one of these things. I remember Earth Essence was one. Okay, so every item that you can gather throughout the world, there's a feat for it for the very first time you gather it. If you go into the feats menu, extracurricular activities, gathering, like I just showed you, and you look at any material that you're going to gather, it tells you right there on the feet, found for this particular one, Earth Essence Crystal, 
found in Val Orium. I can't pronounce that. Val Orium, Val Orien, or on the island of Dawn. I see so many people post in the global chat. Hey, where do I find this kind of gathering material? Because they want to know where to gather it. You never have to ask that question. Again, this is covered in the gathering video as well, which I've already done. You can find it in your feats menu. Each one of them has their own feat. You just look at the feat for whatever type of gathering material you need to get. And you can see right there, it tells you exactly where to find it. Azure Essence Crystal, that was another one. I can find that in Westonia, Kyator Esqu or Outskirts, Locata, or Val Elenium. So th those are easy enough. It tells you right there. So anytime you're looking for any type of gathering material, it will tell you. And now I can see on the right, my quest tracker tells me exactly what I need. I need five crimson. So let me see if I have some in the bank. Because I actually keep a lot of stuff in my bank from like gathering and whatnot. All right, and I need a wait. blah, 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 blah. Okay, Crimson, Earth, Azure. I'll probably have to look again. I'm not very good at memorizing things. All right, so whenever you're talking about uh, crafting type materials, uh, a lot of them are under that thing that looks like the anvil. Now, remember, I need a Crimson Essence Crystals. I only need five. I'm just going to take five so I don't overcrowd mine. Uh, in my inventory there. Welcome essence. There's Azure Essence Crystal. I need five of those. I don't think I'll need more after that, so I'm just going to get five of each. Earth Essence Crystal, five of those. Oh, and it even tells me that I have completed that part of my task. And there's my little asterisk on the right on the tracker, letting me know that I have gathered everything that I needed to gather. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. I pulled those out of my bank because I keep extra stuff like that in my bank. As a, If you want to know how to gather, go see my gathering video. But I did repeat in here the same thing I did in the gathering video, how you can check to see exactly where you need to go to gather the particular material. Now, the other way you can get some of these is by going to the trade broker and buying it for gold. Let's see if we happen to have any Azure Essence. Now I'm going to type in the word Azure. I'm going to put a space. Now I'm just going to type in ESS for Essence because the trade broker does accept partial word searches. But be careful because sometimes you put in a partial word that happens to appear in a whole bunch of different things and then you'll have all these results that you don't even need to be looking at. So then you'll have to refine your search a little better. But you can see right now the trade broker has some Azure Essence crystals for sale. So we could have bought them from the trade broker. And that applies to the other Essence crystals. I happen to have extras in my bank, so I pulled them from the bank. I showed you where to go into your feats menu to learn where the specific locations are where you can go to gather them. And again, I have a special gathering video out there if you need any help with how to gather. But you can see she now has the yellow asterisk over her head, which means we have completed that particular quest, side quest, because it's yellow, and 30 gold. And I should get 90. I get, because I have elite gold, it at least that is gold. It triples it. Okay, now we get into stretching etchings three. Exclamation point means we're starting a new quest. The next step is to process an essence into a silex. Here, I'll give you an essence. Try it for yourself. So we can see on the lower right, she's given us some crystals, and she actually gave us three designs. Crimson Silex, Earth Silex, Azure Silex. All right, now let me do this. Have you finished crushing those scarabs? Okay. Do I have not yet? Oh, let me look at my... Okay. Um, the reason she asked me if I finished crushing scarabs is because the way this craft used to work a few years ago was different and you were crushing scarabs. But now you actually need to look. Apparently they didn't fix her dialogue. It's still old from the way it used to work. But if you look at your quest tracker on the right there, you can see what we actually need to do is process a Crimson Silex, an Earth Silex, and an Azure Silex. 
before we can do that, because we're going to crafting right now. And I forget what I'm doing. Oh, that's right. We're, we're in etching now. I'm still thinking I'm on. Okay, now we're under etching. So we're, we're doing an etching quest. Wait, this is not right. Hold on. I'm getting confused. It's been so long since I've actually had to do one of these things. Do I have to? Wait a minute. Maybe. Okay. I actually have to go into processing. Wow. It, it, it's a little confusing these days because sometimes you go back and forth between different crafts. Okay, so there's my... Right now, Crimson Silex, I have not learned the recipe yet. But I know for a fact she gave it to me. For free. That's why I'm recommending you go ahead and do these quests because you're getting the design for free. Level 1 or above, as I've already shown you how to check for that on any design, so I know I can learn it. And I learned Crimson Silex. Now I'm going to go ahead and learn Earth Silex. Now I'm going to go ahead and learn Azure Silex. So now that I have learned them, because I showed you again under crafting how it gave me the message saying, oh, you, you don't know how to do this. Now I go under Silexes, Crimson, you know, 10, okay. and you can see my Crimson Silex, which I need to do for my quest. I do have 10 out of 10 Crimson Essence Crystals. But the reason it's not giving me the option to craft at the moment, you can see down at the bottom of the screen where it says crafting, my little A button's grayed out. It's like, no, you can't craft. That's because one of the other items I need is 15 craft kits. And I believe that's going to take 15. That's going to take 15. And I need to do one of each. I already have the crystals, as you can see. And, and, that, and I'm showing you this again, just so you know where to look to see what you need and how much you already have. Now, because I need 15 for each, I'm going to go buy 45 craft kits. I actually have a bunch in my bank, but I'm going to buy them just to show you. When it comes to the craft kits, it doesn't matter which of these merchants. You can see some are alchemy, some are uh, etching. It, it doesn't matter which ones you go to for the craft kits, because the craft kits are universal. Ta-da. So, I know I need to do... I need to buy 45 of these, whoops, 45, because I'm doing three different Silexes, and each of them is going to require 15. While I'm in here, because I have discussed it already, uh, you can only be an artisan in one craft at a time. You can only be a master in one craft at a time. You can be a master in one and an artisan in another. And I did mention... That, for example, you're an artisan in a particular craft. Uh, you don't want to become a master in it. But now there's a different craft that you want to become an artisan in. And you're not, you're not really going to be using the other one. Or you're a master in one. And now you decided another craft is important for you to be a master in. So you're willing to give up your mastery of this craft. There is an option in the menu when you are at those levels that asks, do you want to you know, remove this level of, of, of craftsmanship, and then you lose all that knowledge and whatever, but then you can work on another one to go up. Uh, if I recall correctly, to do it, you're going to have to buy a revival fruit from one of these guys, because you can see it says right there, reset your crafting skill below the threshold of specialization, and give you a big old caution, all your advanced designs will be deleted. So if you're a master in a certain craft, you decide to take a revival fruit, go into your menu, give up your mastery of that all the designs you had learned for the master level you will no longer have they will be gone you won't know them anymore so later if you change your mind again you decide to become a master in that particular craft again you're going to have to relearn all of these designs and stuff but just so you know there's a possibility if you become an artisan or you become a master in a particular craft and then later you decide you know what i don't want to be a master in this design anymore i want something else to be a master in that's the process. Get a revival fruit here. Go into that menu. There is an option uh, where you can downgrade yourself. All right. So what we did here was we bought the craft kit. Again, craft kit is universal. You can buy the craft kit from any of these salespeople. It's not going to matter. But you will notice that we this is an alchemy salesman. So because he is alchemy, when it comes to designs, he sells jewel designs. 
and he sells potion recipes. Reagent, we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, so if you're looking for, for a particular design or a recipe, then you will have to go to the correct vendor for that particular craft. Because you go right over here to etching materials. All right, you see craft kit, again, universal. You can buy from any of them. But what she sells are fieldstone designs. And she sells etching designs for weapon or armor, etching for accessories. Okay, so if you were to be looking for an etching design, you would go to one of the salespeople who actually says etching materials over their head. So again, every different type of craft for the designs and stuff, you have to go to the particular merchant for that particular craft. And there are a few special designs uh, and, and whatever out there, extremely higher level ones, you can't buy from them. You, they, they're drops from either special events or special. I know I get some of the really high level etching designs uh, because I hunt world bands all the time with some of my other characters, not this character, but some of my other characters. And I don't believe Three. I, I'm just curious. I'm going to go see now. Kind of getting off track, but I'm, now I'm wondering. Okay, these are all level three. Okay. Uh, I have so many because they drop from the world bounds a lot. No, maybe not, but, but I believe there are a few Lucid Titans Earth. Etching 800. Okay, that, that was a, a field stone for lucid something. I believe it was. And it looks like she does not sell those. So that's, she sells pure and vivid. Okay, so the lucid, which I get from the world bands, because uh, I just wanted to show you an example of that. There are certain super high level. Uh, designs out there that you will get drops from things like the world bands that I hunt. As a solo player, I don't do multiplayer dungeons, but I know a lot of the multiplayer dungeons do drop certain designs that you can't buy from the vendors. But again, I get mine from, from hunting world bands, level 68. I do have a video for each of the level 68 world bands out there. And at the end of each of those videos, you can see what kind of enchanting drops they typically drop because they do chant, uh, uh, they do drop a massive amount of enchanting materials. But those things like the um, lucid designs are rare drops. I, I do have a few in my bank. Uh, I've already taught them to my etching master, who is my berserker. Uh, but you won't get those kind of things every time. You will get them once every however often. It's a random number generation RNG. But I did just want to show you that. That certain high level designs and recipes and whatever, you cannot buy from the merchants. You will have to get them from um, a dungeon, from a world bam, from sometimes it might drop from a special event. You know, so whatever. So we're still doing our, our quest. We haven't even finished it yet. I'm rambling again. And we can see on the right on our quest tracker that we need to process one Crimson Silex, one Earth Silex, one Azure Silex. We learned the designs, which she gave us all three of them for free, which was real sweet. 
appreciate it. And you can see now, I didn't mention this before, you can see Crimson Silex on the left there. That's what I need to craft. That little number one in yellow tells me that I have all the materials I need to craft one. Now, while we're here, look at my production points. You'll recall we used five production points. We were at 4295. But you will also recall that I mentioned that you constantly regenerate production points at a certain rate. And again, I think you get down to zero. It takes about 24 hours or so to get back up to the max. I've seen someone mention recently online it takes 36 hours. I'm not sure. You can always just check and play with it. But we'll also show you how to instantly uh, bring them back. But you can see she's already regenerated those five production points back. So now she's already back to max. Because five production points doesn't take too long to build that back up. But you saw it for yourself. We started at 4300. We crafted one item. We went down to 4295. And now without any help of any special buffs or, or, or drinks or anything, we automatically have gone back up to 4,300 because we're continually regenerating those production points. And again, I think if you get to zero, it's going to take at least 24 hours to get back up to max, maybe up to 36. I'm not sure on the timing, but 24 hours later, you will have quite a few of your production points back, if not all of them. Okay, so, excuse me, we're getting ready to craft. Crimson Silex. And again, if I want to check and see what my potential crit reward would be, I can hit the X and change that number to two. So if I do get a crit hit, which I won't for this, I'm sure, uh, that means that for that particular strike, that one time, I would get two Crimson Silex instead of one. Are we... This is processing. Yeah, I don't have it. Okay. And, and again, we have all the materials we need to craft one because back over here you can see a yellow number one now that yellow number say i had enough crystals and craft kits to craft a hundred of these it would say a hundred that particular number on the left does not take into account your production points so if i had zero production points it would still tell me i can craft a crimson silex but then when i go over and try to craft it it will not allow it so don't let that number fool you too much. That simply tells you that you have all the materials you need to, to make that many of that particular item. Okay, so you can see that yellow number on the left side there. I, I can just look at the menu, and I know that I have the materials necessary to create one Crimson Silex, one Earth Silex, and one Azure Silex. Cool. But always remember, it doesn't take into account production points. So if you get over here and you try to craft and it won't let you or the menu doesn't give you the number that that number gives you, check your production points to see if maybe they're low. But to continue with our little uh, quest here, I'm going to craft a Crimson Silex. Ta-da! going to craft an Earth Silex. Ta-da! And most of your crafting is all going to work the same. Everything that I've already explained and that we actually have had explained to us by doing these quests, we need those particular materials. We need craft kits. Again, you don't need the additive. You don't have to have it. That's, that's something extra you can add on if you want to try to increase your possibility for a crit. Okay, and so my task is complete for that part of the quest and you can see that she has the uh, asterisk over her head meaning we've completed stretching etchings three and she's going to give us an extra 100 gold but because i have elite gold status I, that triples it so i get 300 gold now we move into stretching etchings four now take this design and try to make a blazing powder one I don't remember which is which, so I'll use powder. Because there's a difference between powder and other stuff. You can see she's giving us our Silexes back. Now we get three Titan Spires, and we've got a design for Etching Powder 1. I'm going to try to move on the quest. She's like, nope, you got to keep on doing the first part of the quest, okay? So, so, so you don't have to worry about getting too far ahead in the quest. If you haven't completed the correct step, she's going to tell you, nah, you need to do what I already told you to do. So we know that she gave us another design. 
again, it's under the part of the menu that looks like a box up there. Uh, it's an etching powder one. And again, if you look at the description, it tells you first the recipe. You know, we need three Titan Spire, Crimson Silex, Nurse Silex, and an Azure Silex, which we saw that she already gave us what we needed for it because we're doing a quest, so she gave us the items. And down at the bottom, it tells us it costs 60 production points each time we craft one of these. So that we learn it by simply clicking the A button. We just use it, and now we've learned it. Now we can go down to crafting. And now we're going into etchings. And up here, there we go, etching powder. Um, when it comes to etchings, this is why I was saying I couldn't remember which one I really wanted. Weapons or handwear, you're going to make etching powders. Armor or footwear, you're going to make etching dust. Necklace or earring, you're going to make etching sand. Rings and belts, you're going to use etching grit. And then you have field stones, which you can learn about a little later. I don't, I don't think I'll get much in them because I'm not really going to focus a lot on etching. I'm just doing the etching because it is a quest. And you do get a few of the... Uh, I think that's what I saw in my bank earlier. And because now we're in a different menu, it was in processing. I don't do a lot of the etching anymore. I think I was getting that confused with something else. I don't know. Whatever. Not important. Um, although I think when I was saying earlier that you can't buy certain designs for field stones. Now I'm thinking, oh, no, never mind. I, I'm, I, I'm getting confused. Uh, I'm in the crafting menu looking at things like Lucid. It, it was the salesperson I cannot buy them from. That's what it is. Because, because I don't know any of these. You can see the, me the message right there. You don't have enough skill in etchings. So I, even if I went and... Okay, so that, I had actually talked about that before. If you don't have the appropriate skill level, you can't even learn the skill. I, and I was getting confused because I was talking earlier about the looses, and I saw looses in the menu, but then I remembered, oh, yeah, the, the salesperson does not have them because I was explaining that certain high-level uh, designs and whatever you will only get from a dungeon, a world bam, a special event. They'll drop from, from different things, usually at a very low random rate. Uh, and you cannot buy some of the higher level stuff from the vendor. Although a lot of them you may be able to buy in the trade broker. Sometimes someone will be selling a high level design. So you might check your trade broker once in a while if you're looking for a specific very high level design. Because some are tradable and they will sell them in the trade broker if they don't need it. Uh, or, But then some are not. I, I'm not going back to the bank right now. I'm going to continue with what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay. She told me to make an etching powder one. Uh, I've already learned it because she gave me the design for free. And you can see we already have three out of three Titan Spires. One out of one Crimson Silex. One out of one Edersay. One out of one Ursa. Additives, you do not have to have to craft anything. You can use them if you have them. Oh, and I think my etching... There we go. Okay. Um, I, I happen to have a few extra etching reagent fives in my um, bank, so I pulled them out before I started this video just so I could show you how to do an additive. So say you do have an additive and you want to use it while you're crafting. Uh, you just highlight use additive and you can see at the bottom menu it says choose additive. And on the Xbox, it's your Y button, your yellow Y button. Uh, PlayStation, you'll have to just look at the menu at the bottom. It'll tell you which button to push. So I'm going to hit my Y button. Now, if I have an additive available, which for etchings, I do. See, these reagents are another one of those items where you have to go. If you're going to buy it from one of the salespeople because they sell these, you have to go to the correct vendor for that particular craft. Like, I can't go to the smelting vendor and get etching reagents. I have to go to the etching vendor to get etching reagents. So, bear that in mind. Uh, and I'll show you some other ways to get 
some of these reagents. But I selected Y. If I have one available for that particular craft, it's going to show up in that menu on the left as it has. And down at the bottom the menu, it tells me if I want to use the additive, I hit the A button. Boom. Now it puts my etching reagent into that slot. You see how I added it? I didn't have to have it to craft. Just like earlier, we, we had the option to, to add additives, but we don't have to have additives. But they help you with uh, your potential for crit. And I, I, I want to go into my menu really quickly. Or my inventory. Uh, if I remember where, I think they're under here. Okay, your reagents are under the thing that looks like an anvil, along with a lot of your crafting stuff. Now, this is etching reagent 5, which is a very high-level reagent. And you can see that this incre increases the chance of a critical su success by 20%. You will use one reagent for every item you craft. So if I were crafting 10 of these things right now, I would use up 10 of my etching reagents, unless I stop it early or I tell it only to craft three of them or, or whatever. So I just wanted to see what it does, get back into my crafting, etching powder, and I am going to go ahead and use an additive just to see if maybe I get lucky. In, but I'm only crafting one of these, so there's not much chance that uh, we'll get a crit, but it's possible. And at the bottom, if I want to craft, I hit my A button. Your exceptional crafting work produced bonus materials. Down at the bottom, you see I got an etching powder 2, even though I was crafting an etching powder 1, because up here, if I go to my etching powder, uh, it gives me the X button down there. I can see what my crit reward will be. Because I got a critical hit, you saw that message went across the top about my exceptional craftsmanship. It gave me an etching powder 2, because that is a crit reward. And I think that etching reagent 5 probably helped us to get that, although you can get it without even having reagents, but much slimmer chance. The etching reagents increase your possibility for crit reward. We saw the crit reward, and so I got an etching powder 2 instead of an etching powder 1. Or else I got it on top of it, I'm not sure. Now let me see her. So she ain't just 4. Are you unclear on the process? Okay, now I still can't proceed because I did get the crit bonus. And because I got the crit bonus, I have not yet crafted a uh, etching powder one. I've only crafted an etching powder two. So now I need crimson silex, earth silex, azure silex. I'm going to go to my bank because I, I know I still have extras. And see, that actually, even though I was all excited and happy that I got a crit just so I could show it to you guys, kind of hosed me a little bit on the... Um, the quest part, simply because I still don't have an etching powder one, and she's waiting on me to to give her. Okay, and I needed one earth silex. And again, I'm pulling these out of my bank, crimson silex. But you could uh, check the trade broker, and potentially is it Azure? No. And potentially buy them from the trade broker if you still needed them. Okay, I forgot what the... Oh. Wait a minute. Etching powder one. Oh, I'm actually supposed to do two etching powder ones. And I have so far crafted zero because I've only crafted an etching powder two. So... I think I'm going to need an extra one of each of these. Because I have to craft two of them, not just one. And I forgot, so I can just look at my crafting menu to see what the materials were I needed again. That's from powder one. I need three Titans Fire, so I actually need six Titans. Oh, no, wait a minute. Okay, it said I need to craft two etching powders. You can see that what I'm crafting here, each time I craft an etching powder, it's going to give me two. It tells you right there in parentheses that it's two each time you craft it. 
So I, I actually only needed one of the, each of the Silexes, and I, need, I still need three Titan Spire. I couldn't remember what the other thing was I needed. Now, sometimes crits are awesome because you get extra stuff. But in this case, it kind of messed me up because <laughs> it gave me a crit, which gave me a etching two. But that means I still have not crafted an etching one, which is what she needs. So I'm gonna, now I'm going to go ahead and craft a... Uh, and this time I'm not going to use an additive because uh, I don't actually want to increase my chances of getting a crit because then I'll still be sitting here having to do it. So let me craft one of these. Oh, let me cancel. Yes, let me cancel because I just happened to think of something. Uh, again, we're, we're crafting etching powder. It's going to give me two each time for a regular hit. You know, not a crit bonus, but just regular crafting. It's going to give me two. You can see that number in parentheses. Some of the other things may say three, may say four. That's an important thing to look at to see how many you're going to get from each one if you're trying to calculate how many you need to craft altogether. But I, I did want to show you we have three out of three Titan's Fire. And I showed you over here. It tells me that yellow number in the bracket, that number one tells me that I have enough materials to craft one time. Again, we're going to get two because each time we craft is two, but it tells me I can craft one time with that with that number over there on the menu on the left. And we can see that Titan Spire have three out of three. Now, even though I have two out of one Crimson Silex and two out of one Azure, two out of one, even though I have extras of each of the Silexes, because I only have enough Titan Spire to make one, then the only amount I can make is one. And again, you can see the number right there in yellow. Even though we will actually receive two, because each time you craft one, it, it actually produces two as opposed to one. Okay, so, so try not to mix those things up. I can craft one time based on that yellow one over there and based on what materials I have available. But each time I craft it, it's going to give me two etching powders. So again, bear all that in mind when you're trying to calculate, okay, I'm going to need 50 of these things. Well, if each time you craft it makes five, that means you only need to craft that particular item 10 times because you're going to get 50 that way. All right, let me go ahead and craft this. All right, now I have completed, because this time I actually got an etching one instead of an etching two. Now she has the asterisk, which means we've completed it. And she's going to give me Two, oh, wait a minute, okay. I get to choose. I'll just stick with the etching powder. So she gave me two extra of those, supposedly. All right, and she gave us, uh, well, it was probably 500 gold, but, but it triples because I have elite gold status. Okay, and we've completed the etching quest. So again, I don't know at what point or at what level or after you completed what criteria, these first two people show up that give these crafting quests. But I know she's level 65 and hasn't done any crafting. They show up for her. I have a level 17 I just started who did Stepstone Isle, has done nothing else. She went and checked these areas. They don't have the quest available for her at level 17. So somewhere along the line it will be available. Again, I recommend you become level 65. Go ahead and take care of all your quests and whatever and get to that level first. And then... Go ahead and start working on things like crafting or whatever. Okay, now, the first part of the video was to show you where to go to see both of those crafting quests. And to show you, go ahead and do the crafting quests like we just did. Uh, and you get those uh, several free crafting designs by doing the quests. And, you know, so you didn't have to pay for those particular designs. I gave them to you for free. And if you ever forget what I teach you in this video today, as long as you can remember to go look for these two, they walk you through the process anyway. Okay, so there you go. And now that we've finished with those two quests, we can go ahead and move on to the more advanced stuff when it comes to the crafting. Uh, one thing I did want to maybe correct myself on earlier i did mention that some of the super advanced designs that you can't buy from the vendors you may be able to buy from the trade broker 
Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think he can. Uh, most of them, probably not. Because if I recall correctly, the main reason I have so many sitting in my bank is because of the fact that they are not, but I'm about to... Okay, Lucid was one of the high-level ones. I think... Was it Vivid? Okay, I don't see a restriction on some of these. Okay, here we go. Some of these I cannot trade. It says right there, cannot trade. And you can't put it in the guild bank. I can't put it in my personal bank, obviously. Okay, etching powder three. But, oh, oh, these are boxes. That's what I'm... Okay, etching dust three boxes. Uh, I, I think these are the main ones I was thinking of that dropped from the world bams. Probably dropped from some of the dungeons. Again, they're not a regular drop. They're very, very rare. And you can see it says... Cannot trade and can put it cannot put it in the guild bank. So these kind you are not going to buy through the trade broker. Can't They're not not tradable. Uh, and we're talking sand boxes here, sand three boxes, which which uh, gives you a, a whole bunch of them at once in a box. So again, some of the more advanced um, designs you are not going to buy from. The vendors and you're not going to buy it from the trade broker you're going to have it drop from a world bam and i hunt the world bands all the time with, with a few of my characters it, which is why i have so many of them sitting there extra i do have an etching master but she's already learned all those designs and these are just the extra ones and unfortunately can't get rid of them but i like keeping them on hand in case later i want to make another etching master so that they're already available for that person and i think those are the only super high level So I wanted to go over that again real quickly to kind of correct myself, because I did say some of the ones that dropped from the dungeons or the world bands or from special events uh, may be available th through the trade broker. But now I'm thinking about it, they probably will not be. You know, you, you can always look in the trade broker and you probably won't find it. All right. Now, we went over the two quests because, again, the two quests will teach you the basics of crafting. Each of the crafting skills all work pretty much the same. The only difference is what kind of materials you're going to be using. Now, for crafting, I kept going in there, standing near that woman. You can open your crafting menu anytime, anywhere. You know, so, and you can start crafting if you have the materials on you. But again, if you need craft kits uh, or, or a design or a recipe that you have not yet learned, then you're going to have to go to one of those specialty vendors normally found inside one of these crafting type areas like you're seeing here again all four of the major capital cities definitely have them and some of the i believe some of the larger towns may have like a special merchant there that sells uh just like the craft kits and a few basic things that, but not all the designs or whatever uh, i actually meant to hit this button and this button and this button. Yeah. So, Kayator. Alimenthea. Velika. Okay, she doesn't have it on her map yet, but High Watch, when you when you get High Watch on your map there. Because, um, again, she's one of my newest characters. I've hardly done anything with her. I think when I went into this, uh, she only has like 54 hours of playtime, but, but High Watch also has... Uh, special crafting areas and of course we are in Kyator, one of my favorite places to go craft uh, we are in the chamber of artisans which is where you find all these crafting areas so now we're going to go into the crafting menu quick brief overview uh, first of all some of these kind of tie in with each other like when we we're doing the etchings and we we're going to do the etching powders we saw that we needed silexes. But to create silexes, we had to go to processing. Now, because we did the quest, we got the, the, the uh, designs for free. Uh, but you, you will sometimes have this where you have to go back and forth, craft one thing here to, to add the materials for the other thing over there. But for the silexes, because they're all zero skill level, you can go ahead and have those and make them anytime once you've learned them. 
And then etchings, you could actually work up to become an artisan and become a master. You don't need to be artisan or master in processing to be able to create the silexes that you're going to need for your etchings. And so just clarify that a little bit. But the menu itself in crafting, you have five different crafts. You have smelting. This is where you create golden derricks and plates for enchanting materials. Ingots. I believe we did a little bit of that. Yep. And we saw those being crafted for certain things. Fish crates. You're going to get those from the fishing vendors, uh, which are in different areas. I do have a video out there for fishing, which teaches you not only the... Um, how, how to actually reel in a fish and catch it, but it also goes over all of the different fishing quests where you get the free cooking recipes, which we'll get to cooking in a minute, uh, but you also see where all the fishing people are that you can go to to buy the designs for fish crates. And event items, these come up uh, during a certain period. You have fall and you have winter. These are only special event items that when the event is actually happening, you will see it, you know, all across Terra and, and then you'll be able to get the special recipes for those and, and meet the, you go do fishing and stuff like that uh, to get the materials you need for the special event items. So, so that's not something you'll be crafting all the time. That's something that only happens certain times of the year. Then we have processing. This is where you make your silver siglos and your silver plates. Okay, Smelting was gold, processing was silver. Uh, we were already making some silexes, so processing is where you make your silexes. Accessories. Angler's whiskers. Man, now that I'm thinking about it, I may not have gone over this in my fishing video. Uh, you can craft angler's whiskers, and then you can upgrade angler's whiskers. And they give you special uh, benefit as you can see on the right, which decreases your manual fishing wait time, in this case, by 1.8%. And then when you upgrade it to a 2 and a 3 and a 4 and a 5, it decreases your manual fishing wait time even more. So this is, and that's probably why I didn't really go over it in fishing, because it's actually a crafting thing. You craft it, you craft more to combine them together, get a higher level. So if you're, if you're looking to make angler's whiskers uh, to help you out while you're fishing to, to decrease your manual fishing wait time, it's under processing. And the skill needed is 500. So you'll have to be at least a processing artisan. Because again, it says skill needed 500. You can be a basic 500. But anytime you see skill needed 500, it actually means you need to be an artisan 500 or better. So you're not going to be able to learn that particular design. If you're still a basic 500, you have to upgrade to an artisan. And under processing is also where you can craft your own bait. And again, for the bait designs, you will buy those from the fishing vendors, uh, which are in different areas around any of the fishing spots have the fishing vendors. Uh, and actually, if I were in uh, Velika right now, they happen to have some fishing vendors in Velika. But this is uh, processing is where you will craft your baits. And you see each of them, to craft a bait requires fish fillets. As I mentioned in my fishing video, fish fillets cannot be bought through the trade broker. The only way you get fish fillets is from fishing and then breaking down those fish, dismantling them. Uh, and that's covered in the fishing video how to do it. But if, you, if you're going to make any bait, you're going to make anything that uses fish fillets, you're not going to buy it from another player through the trade broker, wherever you will have to do some fishing to get those materials for your bait. Most of your materials, well, we'll say a lot of your materials, because like here, uh, for Angler's Whiskers, you need pulsating essences. I think you get that from fishing, if I recall correctly. Though. I'm actually trying to show you. Okay, like here. Uh, a lot of the materials here we saw already, we can buy through the trade broker. We can go and gather for ourselves. And I already showed you how to know where to go to find those materials for gathering, and it's also covered in my gathering video that I have out there. Most of the stuff that you're going to create in here, you can get the materials through the trade broker. The craft kits, again, you get from the, the special vendors. Most of the materials you get through the trade vendor, but then you'll have some 
where you're going to have to go do something like fishing, you know, to get those materials. All right, so that was processing. Then you have alchemy. Here is where you can make jewels like rubies, sapphires, emeralds, diamonds. Now, I will get into this. Actually, uh, mentioned earlier, some people were complaining about, well, I want to be able to make emeralds or diamonds, but I'm already a master in something else, and I don't want to give it up. Because to make a diamond, you, you skill needed is 800, which means you have to be an alchemy master. Emeralds, skill 100, it says 500, but that means artisan. So you had to be at least an artisan. Master would work, of course, uh, to make emeralds. So what they did is those specialty vendors, let's go over there, uh, sell Get to the, the designs as we went over. And here's where you have to be very, very careful. Okay? Uh, let's see. Production point, that's fine. Level 65 or above. Um, um, okay, let's get diamond. Production closer. Okay, you can see here there's a, a design for diamond. And it tells you you need 10 emeralds, 1,000 crap kits. And it just says that you need to be level 65 or above. Here's another design for diamond. This one tells you, you have to be alchemy level 800 master or above. But you can see you still need 10 emeralds, 1,000 craft kits. What they did was, this is the, if you can become a master, this is the one you really want. If you're going to become a master, this is the one you want that tells you that you need to be a master. Now, if you are a master in something else and you have no desire to become a master in alchemy, okay, fine get this one but here's going to be the difference you see that says production point 500 this one is production point 375 so if you get the one because you can learn the diamond without being a master if you buy this design you can be a basic it doesn't give you a minimum where you have to be an artisan or a master she can walk in she could design diamonds like this right now um but it's going to cost more production points than if you were to buy the become a master and use this one. So if you are an alchemy master, be careful which of these designs you buy. Because you don't want this one. It's going to cost you a lot more production points. You want this one to cost less production points. And it's the same as smelting. Uh, no need to go to the cellar. Uh, you have Golden Derrick here. You have Golden Derrick here. This Golden Derrick tells me this one I need 500 skills. So I have to be an artisan to do this Golden Derrick. This Golden Derrick will give me three Golden Derricks every time I strike it. And it's going to cost me five Golden Talents, 60 Craft Kits. Now, even though this Golden Derrick, if I were to buy this design, I don't need any skill to buy this Golden Derrick design and start making Golden Derricks right now. I could make them right now using this design. But I'm only going to get one every time I craft. And it's going to cost me 20 production points. If I am up here, it's only going to cost me 15 production points as opposed to 20. And I'm going to get three Golden Derricks out of it as opposed to only one. So you, if, if, if you have... The opportunity, like in this case, if I were a smelting artisan, I would want to be sure I buy the design that requires the 500 skill and learn that design. I don't want to buy the one where I don't need any skill because that's going to burn through a whole lot more production points. Okay, so, and I believe processing, yep, same exact thing. Silver Siglo, you have to be an artisan. And it'll cost you five silver talents and 60 craft kits. You will get three silver siglos for 15 production points. If you do the one that doesn't require any skill, you're only going to get one silver siglo, and it's going to cost you 20 production points. So you're getting one for 20 production points as opposed to three for 15 production points, which is less production points and more uh, silver siglos. So be careful if you are an artisan or a master. In some of these uh, skills, and then you go to, or some of these crafts, 
and then you go to uh, buy the designs, be sure you're buying the correct design. But again, if, if you don't plan on becoming an artisan or master in that particular craft, and you you are okay with uh, burning through all those extra production points, which, you know, if you're not going to become an artisan or master, you're not going to have much other choice anyway. But be careful if you are an artisan or a master in a particular craft and you go to buy the design. Be sure you're buying the design that actually requires you to have that skill as opposed to the one that requires no skill because all the ones that require no skill where there is another one, like, like if you see it in here, Solar Siglo, Solar Siglo, there's two. Be sure you check and see which one is the one that you want to go buy the design for that's not going to burn through all those production points. Same thing with Silver Plate. I can do uh, three for 60 production points if I'm an uh, processing master. I can get that design. Three plates, 60 production points. This one I don't need any skill, but I'll only get one plate, and it's going to cost me 80 production points. So I'm going to run out of production points a lot quicker, and I'm not going to have nearly as many of the materials that I'm crafting. But again, they did that because so many people were asking for it because... Uh, say I am an etching master and I really re and I only have one character and I really want to make my own silver plates well I can't become a uh, processing master if I'm already an etching master and I don't want to give up my etching master so okay then in that case I'll go ahead and get the one where I'm going to burn through a lot of production points and not craft nearly as many now, of course, most of these are crafting like silver plates. If you have the gold, you can go to the trade broker and look for it. People are usually selling these uh, for, for enchanting. So, but just so you know, be very careful if you are an artisan or a man. Uh, of course, if it, if it, if it requires, if, if it's something like the ingots, okay, you can see there, there's only one option for Kabbalah ingot. There aren't, there's not two different designs for it. There's only one. And there's no skill needed. So that one... If, if there's no skill needed for any of them, you can go by the design. There's only one design available. But again, if you're an artisan or a master and you're buying a recipe that requires you to be an artisan or a master, check in your crafting menu first. Be sure there's not two of them. Because if there is, be very, very careful when you're buying the design from the vendor to be sure you get the one that costs less production points and gives you more of the crafted materials. Okay, that's very, very important. Okay, and we're talking about jewels. You can also make your own prime battle solutions, health potions, rejuvenation potions, and divine infusions. Uh, you should probably all be familiar with those liquid things you can drink. If not, uh, something you learn differently. Now, the reagents we had already talked about a little bit. You can actually craft your own. So, if you do want to craft reagents, that's under alchemy. And you can see we have level ones, level twos. Whoops. Yeah, so apparently you can only craft level one or level two. And you can make dyes. For a, the, the, because there are some clothing materials that can be dyed, but it has to state it specifically on that clothing item's description. So, so if you want to make dyes, uh, either for yourself or to sell to others, that would be alchemy. Etchings, we already went through these when we did the um, the etching quest. But again, for weapon or handwear, you're going to be uh, crafting powders. Armor or footwear, you're going to be crafting dust. Necklace earrings, you're going to be crafting sand. Rings or belts, you're going to be crafting grits. And you can craft field stones, which are used in etchings when you're creating them. And again... Yeah, I'm not going to say that again because I, I don't think uh, that was true. Though. Well, yeah, it was true. Could we check? So, some, some of these designs you may not be able to buy from the vendor. You may have to get a drop from a World BAM or a dungeon or a special event or something like that. Uh, and what I went over in the etchings as far as powder, blah, 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 duh. If you're out looking for etchings and you're trying to buy them and you, and you can't remember off the top of your head, Okay, what do I need for, for my footwear? Was that a dust? Was that a grip? Was that a... What do I need? It just look in your crafting menu. 
you, you don't even have to know this craft. You can look in your crafting menu for any, and that, that applies to a lot of these things. When you're looking around for something, you're like, oh, I can't remember which of these applies to what. If you go in the crafting menu, you can see it under etchings, which one applies to which type of gear. Now, cooking. Um, I didn't really go into the crafting part of cooking in my fishing video, but I did go over all of the different fishing quests where you will get your uh, cooking recipes from. Okay. And so the, the fishing, if you want to get into cooking, I recommend you do the fishing quests. You can go see my fishing video. Do all of them to get your cooking recipes. And when it comes to some of these things like a boiled egg, those kind of things down there, you don't go gather those items there and you don't need to fish to get those. You actually go to the fishing vendors, which are at every fishing spot around the world. And there's a couple other places where you can also find them. And, and you buy those items from those vendors. Okay, so that's where you get some of your stuff. And then uh, here we go again with the fish fillets. Okay, based off grape seed oil, you'll buy from the fishing vendors. If you want fish fillets, you have to go fishing. And then you have to dismantle your fish. You, they're not tradable. You can't buy them through a trade broker. You're not going to have someone else, you know, sending them to you through through the email thing or whatever. You want fish fillets because because you want to do some crafting of fish stuff, you're, or cooking. You're going to have to go fishing, and then dismantle those fish. Uh, and then some things like this particular one, uh, you're going to get the fish fillet from doing your own fishing. You're going to get the bay salt and the purified water from the fishing vendors. Harmony grass, you're going to go out and gather. Or you're going to go to the trade broker and see if anyone's selling it. Or if you're like me, you've already done a whole lot of gathering. You have a bunch of it stocked up in your bank anyway. Okay, so when it comes to some of these, especially cooking, you have to actually go out and do the physical activity of fishing. You have to go to the fishing vendors to buy certain materials. And then you have to go out and gather or, or buy from the trade broker certain other materials. So bear in mind, some of these crafting items, it's not just, it's quite as simple as like making a Silex, you know, where all we needed was a craft kit and which we buy from these vendors here and the uh, essences. No, some of these, like I said, you're going to have to go fishing, uh, cob seed, you're either going to have to gather or buy from the trade broker and then you're going to get your purified water and your cream from the fishing vendors. And you're going to get into some of the more advanced ones later. Uh, like spicy fish buffet is a combination. If you want a spicy, I actually like the hot fish buffet from my brawler because uh, kind of bonuses. But it's, it, under your fishing, like the hot fish buffet, you can see the benefits it gives you on the right. You can create some really, really, really good food buffs or food bonuses, whatever you want to call it, uh, under cooking and your crafting. Uh, some people get into the cooking. Of course, you got to be a cooking master to make this. I do have a cooking master, obviously not her. Uh, so this is where you can make food buffs either for yourself or to sell through the trade broker or whatever. Okay, so, so this is cooking, your brief overview. And then you got normal dishes like fish salads. I will tell you right now, which one is it? That is definitely not it. I think it was a plain fish though. Yeah. You, you need to be an artisan to make fish salads. You can buy fish salads through the trade broker or someone selling them. Uh, again, you're going to have to go fishing to get those fish fillets to make it. You either gather or go to the trade broker for your variety route and then dressings you buy from the fishing vendors. Fish salad is a cool fishing buff. You can see over there it reduces your manual fishing time. And it reduces your fishing difficulty by 30%. I always keep some of these on stock. I always use them before I fish. I just, I just really recommend them if you're going fishing. Now, this one here, because I'm talking about all kinds of different things, fishing bus and whatever, which really don't apply. But I do want to point out Moonboard Pie. You do have to be at least an artisan to craft it. I happen to have like over a thousand of these in my bank because 
This is a very common drop uh, during the Santa event, which happens in December. Um, and so I have a whole bunch of them. Now, you, if you learn the cooking recipe and you're at least an artisan, you can make them. Uh, you can probably buy them through the uh, trade broker if you want. But if you look at the benefits on the right, it reduces your crafting time by 20% with a three-second minimum reduction in your crafting time. And it increases your critical success rate by 10%. So this is one of the specific buffs for crafting. Okay, that's why I really wanted to point this one out. Um, and while we're here in the cooking menu, because I wanted to give a brief overview of everything, you can make some fruit wines, Lindbergh beer, and you, some of the cooking ingredients you will need, like the cream, actually, that was my mistake. You don't buy that one from the vendor. You go to the fishing vendor to buy the white sugar and the fresh milk to create your cream, which you will use in one of the other recipes up in the higher part there. And dressing, vinegar, I, I sometimes forget which are the ones you buy from the vendor. But you can always go into your crafting menu under cooking to see which items you need to be able to create certain of the ingredients that you're going to need to go up here. So th this is sometimes a multi-level process when it comes to cooking. And you saw it was kind of a multi-level thing with the etchings where we had to go into processing to create some silexes first. Then we could go in and create our etchings with the cooking. Sometimes you're going to buy ingredients from the fishing vendor, then use those ingredients to create a different kind of ingredient and then use that ingredient to go up to your higher level cooking items to create those. Okay, so some of these are multi-level, but I'm kind of going over the process. But, but even if it is multi-level, each step is the same. You get your ingredients, in this case from the vendors and maybe from uh, gathering, buying from the trade broker. But then the crafting process to make your distilled liquor is the same. And then once you get up to whatever it is you're making with that, just for example, you know, then the, the process itself is still the same. You must first learn the design or the recipe. And again, for cooking, you're going to get your recipes from, or at least a lot of them, from doing the fishing quests. And I do have a video out there for the fishing quests, which um, shows you all the different fishing quests and which recipes you get for each one. So even if you're just missing one or two recipes, the video is segmented. You can go to that particular chapter for that particular recipe because it's described down in the description. You can skip straight to that part of the video if you need to. Now, because we went over all five, I wanted to give you the brief overview of what the five crafts even are. And I brought up Moon Gourd Pie. Moon Gourd Pie is a special buff that you can use your crafting. And I pulled a bunch of stuff out of my bank beforehand just so I could show you these things. Now I'm going to the, because moon gourd pie is consumable, it's something you eat. Let me find it first. There we go. I, uh, oh, wow, I didn't know they broke out into 100 each June and Christmas. Like I said, I had like over a thousand of these. I, I pulled the whole thousand plus all at once from the bank i didn't realize it breaks it out into 100 when it goes into my inventory you got to watch out for that sometimes in the bank it was a thousand a hundred and something all in one line apparently when i pulled it out of the bank it breaks it down into only a hundred each of my inventory so but anyway the windboard pie as we stated will reduce your crafting time by 20 percent three with a three second minimum so you'll be able to craft more quickly it increases your critical success rate by 10%. We saw a critical hit earlier. You get an extra bonus item for whatever it is you're crafting when you get a critical hit. And it lasts for 30 minutes. Like I said, I got a whole bunch of these just from killing Santas during the Santa event, Santa event which happens every December. I highly recommend that event to everyone because there's a lot of really cool drops you get. Another cool drop I actually was getting mostly from there. Now, this one I did notice it broke out. I actually have a few hundred of these in my bank uh, because, again, I got a bunch of these from the Santa event as well. This one is Castanica Midnight Oil. I'm a, not quite sure about this description because it says increases the crafting speed of all equipment 
by 50% for one hour. We used to actually craft equipment, but we don't craft equipment anymore. They completely changed the entire crafting thing and the equipment works differently than it used to. It's a much simpler process for upgrading equipment at this point. So I don't know if that really applies to anything now or if that word equipment actually means other stuff like silexes and uh, derricks and whatever. I don't know. But I would say it don't hurt at all to pop one. And if I recall correctly, um, I can, I, I think, I'm just going to try it right now. Because uh, I'm going to want these later anyway. At least one. Yeah. You can see up top there, uh, a lot of food items, uh, the fighting buffs, like we were looking at hot fish buffets and spicy fish buffets, those kind of food buffs, you can only have one active at a time. So if I took a hot spicy buffet and to increase my strength, and then I took, a, oh no, I'm sorry, hot spicy to increase my crit, then I took a, I'm getting, whatever. If I took one food buff for a crit, and then I took a different food buff for a um, power or whatever, as long as they're at least, you know, the same strength or the second one's a more powerful strength, then that second one's going to override the first one. The first one will be gone, and, and I'll only have one active. You can only have one of those kind of food buffs active one at a time. But when it comes to your Castanica oil and your move board pie, you can see both of them are active up there. You can run them both at the same time. Like I said, the Castanica midnight oil, I'm not really sure from that description what it if it really helps or not, because it looks like it might be a holdover from the old crafting that we used to do, but it's not going to hurt. If you happen to have someone in hand, psh, take it because you can still use your Moongore pie. That Moongore pie, every time I'm getting ready to craft, I mean, if I'm crafting one or two items, I'm not going to bother, but especially during an, uh, an enchanting event that's going on where I'm upgrading a bunch of uh, armor and stuff, so I'm pumping out a whole lot of like golden derricks or golden plates over the course of a few hours, and, and if you see my video I did for how to get to life level 60 quickly so you can get that loose cannon title, a shiny gold title. I go into a lot of in-depth on that there. I always use a moon gourd pot because, again, it will reduce your crafting time by 20% and increases your critical success chance by 10%. Now, as far as, because we're still talking uh, buffs or bonuses here, we did the Casanica Midnight Oil, which, again, I'm a little unsure of. Uh, the Moon Gourd Pie, which I strongly recommend. If you happen to have elite status, I have elite gold, which gives me a 5% critical success buff for anything I'm crafting. We went over critical success stuff earlier. We'll probably mention it again. Elite gold gives you a 5% extra chance. And then we get 100%, 150% crafting skill XP. So this is one of those bonuses or buffs where, like in her case, she's done no crafting. That's why I picked her to do this particular video. She had done no crafting at all. This particular buff for having elite gold, instead of the regular XP that you get for crafting, she gets a 150%. It's increased by 150%. So she'll be able to increase her crafting levels much more quickly. Now, if you go to Elite Silver, uh, you also get a buff for your crafting XP, but it's only 100% as opposed to 150%. I forget what the crit success buff was for gold, but you get a 3% for critical success on the silver if you have Elite Silver. And if you happen to have bronze, you don't get any. I already know that. that you don't get buffs for those. Um, they don't sell the bronze Elite status in the store anymore. But if you're like me and you saw the announcement that they were going to take them out of the store, I went to all of my alternate gamer tags and stocked them up for a very long time on the bronze. So you may still have bronze working, but it won't give you a buck for these. Now, we had talked about production points. And you can see again, we've only used a few production points and we went below 4,300. But because it continually regenerates production points just naturally, we're now at 4,300. But, I pulled these out of my bank already. There are a few, uh, th well actually, before I do that, 
when it comes to production points, this has nothing to do, I just want to grab it because it's there. When it comes to production points, if you have elite gold, each day you can use up to five vial of L News Tears 200. That, and you see it says right there, instantly restore 200 production points. And you get five of them once a day. So you can actually increase instantly up to 1,000 production points that you've used if you have elite gold. Silver, I do not believe. Yeah, it didn't have it. And of course, bronze does not have it. But that is uh, for your production points. Specifically, if you're running out of those, if you have elite gold, you can get that. Now, if we go into my inventory, there are certain uh, other consumables that you can sometimes get a special drops from special events going on. You can find these in the trade broker and buy them. We have aged Elenus tier, which immediately restores 4,000 production points. So, like in my case, it, it immediately restores 4,000 production points. Now, in my case, the maximum production points I can have, as you can see at the bottom, is 4,300. Right now, I have 4,300. Now, say I got my, I was crafting a few things and I get my production points down to 3,000. Well, I'm only 1,300 away from my max. I don't want to take that HL News tier that's going to give me 4,000 because it won't go over my max. I will still only have, by the time it does it, my max is only 4,300. So if I get my production points down to 3,000 and I want to get them back up to, you know, close to my 4,300, if I use an HL new tier, which will give me 4,000 back, I'm going to waste it, basically. Because the only benefit I'm going to get from it, if I'm down to 3,000, my max is 4,300, which is the highest it will take me, then it's only going to give me 1,300 production points because it's going to max me at 4,300 like it shows right now. And that HL news tier, I've just wasted all those other few thousand points that because it, it normally gives me 4,000. So like in a case like this, if I'm going to use an HL news tier, I'm going to keep on crafting or gathering or whatever I'm doing because gathering and crafting both use up production points. In this particular case, I would always get my production points below 300 before I will take an HL news tier because that way I'll get the full benefit of all 4,000 points as opposed to wasting points. Because if I'm at exactly 300, then it'll take me to, to 4,300. If I'm down to only 100 production points, I take a HL news tier, it's going to put me at 4,100 because it'll give me 4,000. But I haven't wasted any. That's great. Always be sure you look at that before you're taking some of these special uh, production point bonuses. All right, let me get back into what the actual bonuses were, the, the special uh, consumables. Okay, age elements tier immediately restores 4,000 production points. Then you have the regular elements tier immediately restores 1,000 production points. So for these, like I said, my max was 4,300. Um, as long as I get below 3,300 production points, I can go ahead and use this without wasting anything because this one's only going to give me a thousand. Okay, so that it, again, always look at that and be sure you're not wasting because if I, if I have a max of 4,300 and I get down to 4,000 production points and I take one of these, it's only going to put me at 4,300, which was only 300 points. So I've wasted 700 production points that I could have used. So watch out for that. Then you have the Crafter's Cure-All, which does exactly the same thing as the age elements tier. It immediately restores 4,000 production points. All that same stuff applies, as I said before. And then we also have fermented moonlight fruit. This sometimes drops from a, a few. That's where I'd gotten it was drops from some events. I can't remember which one. It might have been the Santa event. Because um, all of these I'm showing you that give you uh, production points back drop from certain events you can buy them through the trade broker from other people they may drop from certain dungeons or something i don't know exactly where else you can get them but 
Uh, but the fermented moonlight fruit, if you get that, you can see it immediately restores 500 production points. And, you know, so that's one of those things that, like, you might have used up all your production points, and you only need to craft one or two more items. So if you have to have some of these on hand, you go ahead and use those as opposed to wasting a 4,000 one if, if you're almost done for crafting or for gathering for the day and you know you are only going to burn through less than 500 points. You know, so that's another thing to take into consideration. If you're almost done with your gathering or your crafting or whatever for the day, but you've run out of your production points, you can no longer gather or craft or whatever it is you had to be doing. If you have... And you know you're only going to do a little bit more. This only going to cost you, you know, two, three, five hundred, whatever. If you have an L News tier for a thousand, and you have an H L News tier for four thousand, but you know you're only going to be using less than a thousand production points to finish up for today, you want to take the L News tier. Don't waste all those points on that one if you're not going to use them. Okay, so those are your. Uh, some of the uh, special consumables. Age L News tier, 4,000 production points. L News tier, 1,000 production points. Crafters Cure All, 4,000 production points. Fermented Moonlight Fruit, 500 production points. And as I mentioned, you can buy them usually through the trade broker. And I'm going to show you something here with the trade broker when it comes to purchasing your production point. Cause, um, consumables that'll give you production points back. Now we have Crafters Cure All is one of them. And again, if you're in the trade broker buying anything, it will accept a partial word search. So I'm looking for Crafters Cure All, but I'm going to put the word Crafter. And then I'm going to hit the correct button. Okay. Wow, there's usually a lot for sale. They're almost out. Okay, so we have some a few Crafters Cure All out there for sale right now. Oh, we have the Storm Cry Enchanting event going on. So a lot of people are probably doing a lot of in, uh, crafting and stuff right now. So probably why there's not many available at the moment. Probably getting sold out. But there's our Crafters Cure All. Cheapest one right now is 18,000 gold. Now, we know that we can use a Crafters Cure All. But we also know that an aged Elenus tier does exactly the same thing as a crafter's cure all. So I'm just going to put the word aged. And the cheapest aged yellow news tier is 13,500 gold. The cheapest crafter's cure all was 18,000 gold. For some reason, there are people out there charging a lot more for that one. So anytime you're buying anything through a trade broker and you know you're looking for something, but there's another item that does exactly the same thing as the other item you're looking for, do your comparison shopping. As we saw, if I had only looked for Crafters Cure All and I really needed one right now, I would have blown 18,000 gold on it. Even though they have the HL News tier available, which also restores 4,000 production points, does exactly the same thing, cost me 13,500 gold instead of 18,000. So right there, I could save myself 4,500 gold. So if I were to have to buy, what, three of these things? Yeah, if, if I had more of them out there available for 15,000, but basically four of them, uh, I could get a free one. As opposed to if I were buying, buying the uh, Crafter's Cure-All. So, so bear that in mind, anytime you're shopping in the trade broker, if you're looking for certain things like this, and you know that there's another item out there that does the exact same thing, do your comparison shopping. Now, we've gone over some of the buffs that are available for crafting. And then we've gone over items that you can get either through the trade broker, through special drops for special events and whatever, uh, to instantly bring back some of your production points. We run out of production points. And another thing I did put in my inventory, I pulled out of my bank. If you happen to have elite status, then every day, uh, I'm going to pop these right now just for the heck of it. I got some metamorphic emblems. Ta-da! Some more metamorphic emblems. Ta-da! And I had already put some metamorphic emblems in here. Uh, just to show you. If you go into your metamorphic emblems, and, and you get metamorphic emblems just from doing quests, you know, while you're leveling up, and they drop from certain other events, and whatever else. I think it's enchanting materials. 
You can see on your metamorphic emblems, you can buy enchanting materials. But if you get far enough down, you can also buy Elenu's Tear and Aged Elenu's Tear. So that's another place where you can go to buy some of these production point restoration things that you can immediately restore some of your production points. Elenu's Tear again will restore 1,000 production points. Aged Elenu will restore 4,000 production points. You can buy them with your metamorphic emblems, okay? Because you're not paying money for them. You're using metamorphic emblems, and it tells you right there where each of their purchase prices are, and it tells you how, much, how many metamorphic emblems you have available. And then if I go to entropic emblems, you can get uh, some of these from certain drops, from doing certain things in the game. I don't remember right off the top of my head exactly what they dropped from. But if you go under consumables, again, Alanus here, Age Alanus here. So, entropic emblems, metamorphic emblems, those are places that you can buy them. Sometimes they would drop from certain events. Now, earlier, we talked a little bit about the additives. Uh, I actually used an additive when I crafted a, a particular item, and it gave me, I ended up getting a crit bonus because, uh, again, additives will give you a certain percentage chance increase of getting a crit bonus. Now, sometimes you will do certain events. Uh, you may be in a certain place that gives something. Sometimes you will receive an additive powder or several additive powders uh, for fighting certain monsters, maybe. I'm not sure exactly where I got all these. But if you go into your additive powder box, remember, you can buy reagents from the uh, the crafting vendors but if you happen to pick up some of these you can also go in and use those tokens to buy reagents and as you can see since we're in here uh alchemy reagent one uh it, any of these should be the same level one gives you three percent increased chance to critical success you know we saw what a crit was earlier it gives you extra bonus materials that you're crafting two is going to give you a five percent increase Three is going to give you an 8% increase. Four is going to give you a 12% increase. And then level five is going to give you a 20% increase chance to get a critical hit and, and get extra in, uh, crafting materials that you're crafting. Now, the thing you have to be careful about, both here and anytime you're seeing the vendors, is be sure you're getting the right agent, reagent that you want. Because you will waste your tokens in this case, or your money, if you're buying it from uh, the vendors, if you buy the wrong one. Like in this case, if I buy a hundred of these alchemy reagents, but I'm actually going into my crafting to do etching, well, that alchemy reagent's not going to show up. Uh, as, you, as you saw earlier, actually, and, I, and I'll demonstrate again, I was in smelting or something. It really doesn't matter. And say I wanted to make these. I talked to... Okay, it actually showed it, but it's not going to... Yeah, it's not going to let me do it. it. I didn't think it would even show it. I didn't think it showed it earlier. Let me, let me try a different. Okay. That that was weird it showed it. Different. Maybe that's that particular item. But you can see, I have a certain type of reagent available. Or did I have, or was it a smelting? I, I thought it was etching. Oh, now it's not going to show up. Okay. <laughs> That's what I wanted, actually. Um, say I had bought a whole bunch of smelting reagents. Ah, I'm doing this backwards. A bunch of etching reagents. I bought etching reagents, but I actually want to do smelting. I'm making some golden dirt. So when I tell it to add an additive, there's no additive for me to add. It's not going to work. Because I did not buy the correct type. Uh, additive and because I do have etching reagents when I go into my etching now it's available why did I say oh okay it, it did not let me add it it was go even though it is for etching I'm in etching uh, as you can see I I don't have enough materials to actually because I don't have enough Titan's fire on me but you did see me do it earlier where I did use the reagent. 
The only reason I can't use it, so that's something to look at. You know, if you're trying to add your reagent, you're like, why isn't it had? Be sure you actually have enough materials to craft because it's not going to let you add it unless you actually have something you can craft. And again, when I showed you the yellow numbers earlier, you can see we don't have a yellow number right now because we don't have enough materials to even craft it. But that's the way the additives work. And again, you have to be extremely careful. Now, earlier, I was over here where we have alchemy and etching. Now, let me go into this other room. Over here, we have processing, smelting. So, so depending on, you know, which kind of crafting items you're looking for and you have to go to a specific vendor, there are different rooms uh, in some of these crafting areas, like here in Kayator. So you just have to go to a different room. But anywhere, you, but it's still in the Chamber of Artisans. All of your, you can see the map in the upper right. The Chamber of Artisans area is where you're going to look for all your crafting stuff in Kayator. Uh, and again, okay, that's not where, smelting. I thought I bought. Oh, there it is. Okay, we can get a smelting reagent one from her. That's what it is. Um, so again, if I were to buy a bunch of the smelting reagents from her, but I were actually going in to do etching, I would have wasted all that money because smelting reagent will not work for etching. And, and, and earlier you saw I had the etching, but if I wanted to do smelting, I need to come see her and buy smelting reagents. Okay, so always be careful and be sure... And it's a little easier when you buy them from the vendors. Again, when I am in here, because I can't even tell you how many times I've done it, when I've been in my additive powders, I'm like, oh, reagent. And I have actually bought, because it defaults to alchemy, but I needed it for smelting or something. And I ended up buying a bunch of alchemy reagents. And I was like, oh, man, because I couldn't use it for smelting. So be sure, if, especially, you know, it's a lot easier when each vendor only sells a different type. But especially if you get some additive powder and you get in there, be sure you move to the correct tab and get the correct type of reagent. Otherwise, you're going to waste a whole bunch of these tokens if you just see reagent, alchemy, default, and you buy a bunch of them. And then you're like, oh, I meant smelting. Because I have literally done that several times. <laughs> so be careful with that. Okay, now I actually want to go into my crafting menu. I think I'm going to go ahead and try for smelting because I want to show everyone the full process going to artisan and then going to master. And I'm going to start with smelting because, oh, wait a minute, is it smelting what I need? Yeah, that's what I need. Uh, because to be perfectly honest, right now uh, we have a Stormcrow Enchanting event going on. Uh, out of my top 13 characters, one of each class, they're the main ones I focus on, 11 have shiny gold titles. This warrior and my priestess are the only two of my top 13 that do not yet have their shiny gold titles. I was actually working on uh, enchanting and crafting with my priestess. And then I was like, oh, I need some more golden plates, I think it was, or Derek's, whichever. Um, but my priestess is set up as a master for alchemy for creating the gemstones when I run out of those. So I was like, oh, let me come over to Warrior, and I'll go ahead and make her a master smelter. And then when I happened to be thinking about it, I was like, oh, I have not yet done a crafting video, and I'm keeping meaning to do it. But she's like my last one who has not done, gone up in any crafting levels yet. So I was like, well, let's... Take a little break and, and do a video while we're here, you know. <laughs> so. so now we can move into how to actually increase your crafting skill for any particular craft. And there are three skill levels. You have basic, then you have artisan, then you have master. And I'm going to show you how to get to all of those. If you look, I'm going to do smelting because I want her to become a smelting master. If you look at the upper left, you see the word crafting. You see that I am smelting basic. And my skill is only three out of possible 500. Before I can become an artisan, I have to get to skill level 500. 
So right now, let's see, skill needed 500. Nope. Nope. So again, when you look at any of these, it tells you what skill level is needed to even be able to learn those designs. Golden Derricks, I have to already be an artisan. So I can't even learn that skill yet. Golden Plate. Okay. That's one of the, yeah. Golden Plate, you have to be a master. Uh, you need skill level 800. So I can't learn that design yet. Uh, I could go do these, but again, when you have two of the same uh, type of crafting, like Golden Derricks twice, Golden Plates twice. If I were to do this one, which requires no skill, it's going to cost me a whole lot more production points, and I'm not going to get it nearly as many enchanting materials. So I don't really want to do that, even though it will increase my skill by one for each time. So let's take a look at ingots. Okay, ingots, I can learn. And because we did that quest earlier, we got some free designs. I can already make Kabbalah ingots. I know how to make them. I can make Zer metal ingots. I can make nope. I don't have. I haven't learned Shad steel nor steel Galborn yet. Uh, but they are designs I could go and get. Let me see. All right, fish crates. Fish crate one will give me a skill gain of three, and I only need zero to even learn it. Uh, I can't do a fish crate two until I get to skill level three hundred. And event items are only certain times of the year, and you're not going to get skill from those anyway. So what you're looking at is your skill gains. Like a fish crate one, every time I craft one, I'm going to get three more on my skill gain. But again, I do have elite gold, and I showed you it gives you like an extra 150%. So I'm actually going to get more than just three on my skill. If I go back and do Kabbalah ingots, I'm going to get one skill gain point on each one. I want to kind of do it a little more quickly. Fish crates, again, you can only get from the fishing vendors. So I am going to go ahead and do a quick little fast travel to where I know I can find a fishing vendor because I don't know how to make those yet. Now, the different fishing spots, I do have a fishing video out there that shows you uh, all the different fishing spots and all the different fishing quests where you can get the recipes and stuff. Uh, a lot of fishing spots, you could travel to a certain city, and then you're going to have to either, you know, run or ride or fly or uh, take a local teleportal or something. But Cutthroat Harbor is always the easy. If you need to get to a fishing spot, Cutthroat Harbor is the easiest because as soon as you get there, and again, I'm elite, so I can fast travel. If you don't have elite, go ahead and take a Pegasus to get there. Cutthroat Harbor in Osterath, like I showed you on the map, you, you're right there by the beach and you're close to the fishing vendors already. So that's the most convenient place to go if you're going to go buy from a fishing vendor or if you're going to sell stuff to the fishmongers or whatever. Those things are covered in my fishing video. I'm trying not to talk too much about those, I guess. I have a tendency to do that a lot because these things are so interrelated and I get so excited and happy because I love fishing and crafting and enchanting and gathering. And Is she the right one? I don't know. I think it's the token vendor. Okay, so the token vendor. And, and because we're talking about crafting, and I mentioned earlier, under cooking, I'm sorry, not cooking. You have to do the quest to get the cooking recipes. But here's where you're very big. But you're, under crafting, you can create fish crates. But the only way to get the designs for them is to go to a fishing vendor. But it has to be the... Um, what did I... The, the token vendors. So you're going to have to use fishing tokens, and you get those by fishing. Now, I didn't have any in my inventory. So I'm going to go to my bank, because I have a bunch of them in my bank. Again, you would just go fishing for a while to get enough of them. I do have a fishing video that, that talks a lot about that, and your priorities for what you may want to save them for first and whatever. So let me just grab a few of those. Now I have some fishing tokens. And I'm going to the angler token vendor. And again, if you're going to do to craft fish crates, you have to go to an angler token vendor to get the designs for that. 
Now this one's going to cost me 10 tokens for crate one. And it's going to ooh, 500 tokens for crate two design. Now you can see again, uh, where is it on in the middle for the description down at the bottom. I have to be smelting level 300 or more to learn uh, this crate two, or at least to craft this crate two. But I'm going to go ahead and buy one. I can still buy it, even though I can't actually craft them yet. And that's all I want is, is one and two. There's a reason why I want and two. And now I'm going to head on back. Um, well, actually, let me start here. Just because I was telling you before, when you're crafting, you don't have to be in a crafting shop to craft. You can be anywhere you want. I'm standing by the beach. I'm chilling. I'm sunbathing. I'm doing. I'm going into my crafting menu. Oh, not. First, I have to learn the design. Fish crate one. Learned it. Fish crate two. Okay, let me learn it. Go into crafting. Oh, we're working on smelting. Fish crates. And, and this is where some of those things tie in. Like the fishing stuff. I had to go to a fishing vendor to get my fish crate designs to learn how to do them. Cooking. You're going to get your cooking recipes by doing the fishing quests that are in the fishing video I have out there. So, so some of these things all kind of tie together and you have to do one to get to the other. But I'm talking about fish crates right now. Fish crate. Oh, I need stuff. Okay. So fish crate one. I've learned it. And I can, and I can create them. Okay, now you see I bought Fish Crate 2, and it even allowed me to learn the design, because it's still basic, even though it's, you know, it's not Artisan or Master. But it tells me I don't have enough skill in smelting to create a Fish Crate 2, but I can create a Fish Crate 1, because I do have enough skill for that. I forgot, uh, Fish Fillets, again, you're only going to get your Fish Fillets by fishing, and then dismantling the fish. Luckily, I happen to have a few in my bank. I'll grab a few fish fillets. And I need the I needed some Kabbalah ore. And I needed some plain stone. I do a lot of gathering people, so I keep all that extra stuff in my bank. So I'll be prepared for the next time I need to make some stuff. Now the fish crates, um, we had talked before about certain things you can craft and sell for money. When it comes to the fish crates, if you want to make a little bit of money from crafting those, any of the fishing spots has a Federation Resource Manager, and it will buy fish crates from you. But that is uh, also covered in my fishing one. Now, again, you can craft anywhere you happen to be as long as you have the materials that you need to do the crafting. I'm under smelting because I want to try to get higher level for my smelting. I have learned the design for fish crate one. It's telling me right now that I have enough materials to create 125 fish crates. And you can see the production cost for each one I do is going to be 30. So we're going to, and right now we have 4,300 production points available. We are at our max production points because we've rebuilt some back just naturally. So I'm, I'm just going to go here and I'm going to tell it, matter of fact, I'm going to tell it to make 600 of them. And here's why. It defaults to whatever the max is that you can make. Now, we talked earlier about that yellow number. That 125 tells me that I have enough materials to make 125 of these. It does not take into account production points. Okay, it'll still say 125, even if I only have enough production points to make 20. However, when I go here, and I tell it, to, I'm going to make 600, and it's going to tell me, no, you're not. You're going to make 125. At this point, if my production points only were enough to make 20 of these, it's only going to let me make 20. That, that number right there would now say 20. So that's how you know what the max is that you can make based on both the materials and your production points.
All right, so I'm going to start crafting. Before I do, let me go back. Smelting basic skill, I have three out of 500. And it looks like I have enough production points and materials to make 125 fish crates. And each fish crate, as you can see, is going to give me three skill gain, but because I have elite gold, which gives me a boost, I think it was 150% more skill. I'll actually get more than three, I guess probably somewhere around seven or so for each one that I craft. Now, this is what the the um, crafting interface looks like. And remember, I did have a moon gourd pie that I ate, which is increasing my crafting time. I'm crafting a little faster than I were if I did not take it. And it increases my chances for crit by a little bit. Uh, I think 10%. Now, the thing is, it's kind of ghosted. But up near the upper left corner, you can still see where it says crafting. And then you can still see where it says smelting basic. And you, for me, I have to get up close to the screen because my eyesight's not that good. But you can see that I still need 500 uh, to get to the top of basic. But right now, I can barely see the ghosted numbers. I'm up to 101 crafting skill. Now I'm up to 115. Now I'm up to 122. You, you can see, it, it's kind of hard to see, but next to Smelting Basic near the upper left corner of the screen, you can watch your production points going up. Because the only reason I'm making all these crates is I want to get to level 500. So I don't want to, if I do get to level 500 just from this, I do not want it to keep on making more. I don't want to waste my production points and stuff, because the only reason I'm crafting all these right now is just to get my skill level up. You know, now if I were crafting all these because I want to have a whole bunch of them, sure, I can keep on going even after I hit 500, but that's kind of a waste. Uh, so right now my skill level is 213 out of 500. Now also watch this where it says right in the middle of the screen, skill gain plus three. Because sometimes when you are crafting and you're trying to get your skill level up, uh, certain things that you're doing might say skill gain plus three, but then once you get up to maybe 300 or so, it'll suddenly say skill gain zero. If you see that skill gain plus three, you change the skill, skill gain zero, cancel any more production. On Xbox, you can see right at the bottom, I hit the B button if I want to cancel. If you're on PlayStation, it'll tell you what button to hit. But skill gain plus zero. I have gotten to a point where I'm not going to get any extra skill level. So now I'm going to stop it. I'm going to cancel it because there's no point in continuing with those when I'm trying to get my skill level up, but it's not going to give me any more skill level. All right, so I, can, I can craft more fish crate ones, but I don't want to because I'm wasting it. Now, if I go to fish crate two, as you will recall, I already bought the design, and I already learned the design. And now you can see I'm smelting basic skill 300, which is the skill that I needed to be able to craft fish crates too. Well, isn't that convenient? How lucky I just happened to buy fish crate 2 design. Now, for the fish crate 2, I also need shad steel ingots instead of the Kabbalah uh, ore that I was using. So, shad steel ingots... Let me go back to my bank. But you can see I'm crafting out in the middle of nowhere. I don't need to be in one of those crafting centers to do my crafting as long as I can get my hands on the materials that I need to do the crafting. So now I'm looking for shad steel ingots. Okay, they might be in a different... Okay, they're probably here in this bank. Shad steel ingots. I happen to have a few of those. And, and I'm leaving one there just because I sometimes forget which thing goes into which of my banks. So a big number like this, I'll usually leave one there. Just so when I'm going to my bank and thinking to myself, shoot, where did I even get those from when I'm putting the extras back? That's my easy way of remembering which bank it was in by just leaving one there. And I don't need to go anywhere. I can go ahead and crap right here. Doesn't matter where I'm crafting. Again, we're under smelting. 
and we were doing fish crates. And now I have enough materials to create 50, or 32 fish crates. And again, I can put any number I want up here that's more than whatever it says I can craft. And it's only going to give me the number that I can craft in this particular case based on my materials and my production points. Luckily, I still have plenty of production points left. And again, it says skill gain plus three. I'm watching that. And in the upper left corner, very, very light, hard to see. I can see next to the word smelting basic that right now I am, my skill level is up to 332 out of 500. And again, once I hit 500, I want to stop crafting. I don't, because my only purpose is to get my skill level up. Three eighty one. Oh, okay. I'm out of. You saw that message. You're out of inventory space. That means my inventory is full, so I can't fit anymore. But I know for a fact because I didn't realize it when I picked them up earlier that some of these things. Let's see. Two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred, thousand. 1100 okay and you can see in the bank that 1100 moon board pies only takes up one line but then when i moved it over to my inventory it, it was only like 100 so it was taking up 11 spots uh, and there's all of our stuff again that we were looking at earlier. And I, I did keep a few moon gourd pies for later. Do I, oh, my moon gourd pie run out. I can see up at the top screen um, because the Casanica Midnight Oil lasts longer than the moon gourd pie. So I'm, I'm going to take a moon gourd pie. I probably wasn't even using it before. Uh, but again, when I'm crafting, especially a bunch of materials, and especially if I'm leveling up one of my characters, I always take a moon gourd pie. And again, I have so many just from the Santa hunting events that happen every December because these drop a lot from there and you can craft them. I showed you under cooking and crafting how you can craft your own if you get the uh, cooking skill up for it. So I'm going to, I took one moon board pie. It should be good for 30 minutes. And again, it reduces my crafting time by 20%. So I craft more quickly and increases my chance for a critical success by 10%, which would give me extra crafting items all right now i can get back to my crafting you can see better now since it's not behind that grayed out thing smelting basic skill i'm now up to 381 out of 500 in the basic level go back to my fish crates fish crate two again that tells me i can make 21 i can put any number i want as long as it's more than that number and it's only going to give me the number and now i'm crafting again and again, it still says skill gain plus three, so I am increasing my skill level. And if I look up there in the upper left, even though it's really, really gray, I can see smelting basic. I'm now up to 409 out of 500, so we're getting pretty close. We're almost uh, to the top of the basic skill level for this particular craft. And again, all of them work the same, all five different crafts. This is how you're going to get your skill level up. It's just within each craft, obviously, you'll be crafting different types of things to get your skill level up. Four seventy nine. Four eighty six. Just a few more, and we're gonna be at five hundred. And when we hit five hundred, my skill gain should say zero, just like that. And now you see that message. You can advance your crafting. Oops, I didn't get to read all of it. You, you can go back and pause if you want to read it. But basically what it was telling me was I can, I'm can. i now 500 out of 500, smelting basic skill level. See that right there in the upper left? There, right under crafting, smelting basic skill, 500 out of 500. 500 skill level is the max for basic. But now, near the right side of the screen, right up above the the, the middle piece there, you can see a flashing yellow promotion test that was not there before. 
I'll give you all a few seconds in case you're not seeing it yet. It says promotion test. And on Xbox, it tells me to hit my Y button to get into that menu. If you're on PlayStation, it'll tell you what button to hit. So I'm going to hit my Y button on my Xbox. You must pass a test to advance to smelting artisan. Up to one crafting skill can be increased to artisan. Would you like to take the test? Now, I went over that earlier. You can only be an artisan in one skill at any given time. If you want to become an artisan in a different skill, and you're already an artisan in one skill, you have to give up that skill. And earlier I went over that once you are an artisan, there will be a menu option, and you go buy one of those special fruit things from any one of the uh, crafting vendors, and then you can reduce from artisan back to basic on the one where you're already an artisan, and then you can go ahead and increase yourself to artisan on the other one if you have to. But but you will never be an artisan in two or more skills. And again, I have masters uh, because I have so many characters. I have five characters that uh, are masters in a different craft each. And I have some other masters as well, but I had started with five. So if you have multiple characters, I do recommend, even if you have two, you know, uh, I do recommend you, you go ahead and make them at least artisan, uh, maybe master in different crafts. But anyway, this is going to be our test to get to smelting level artisan. And it tells me I have to craft ingots. Now, this, th this part can be a little confusing. Each time I craft an ingot, I will get two points. And I need to get 20 points. So even though on the right it looks like I have to craft 20, I actually only have to craft 10. Why they didn't just set it up to say that I have to craft 10 and it showed me 0 to 10, I don't know why they did it this way. But but I have to, every time I craft an ingot, I'm going to get 2 points. But I have to have 20 points. So I actually only have to craft 10 of them for the ingots. So let's do that and we'll get to the fish crate in a minute. All right, so the ingots, let's see if I still have. Okay, here's where the fun part comes in. Now, if I didn't happen to have some craft kits in my bank, then I would have to go to one of the places where the uh, crafting vendors are. Like we were in Kayator, and earlier when we were doing that, uh, one of the quests, we were in uh, Velika, and again, each of the four major capital cities you can find them. And sometimes there is a little person standing around that will at least sell you craft kits in some of the major towns. But I'm not sure where those are. I haven't really looked for them. Um, what was I looking for? Oh. Craft kits. If I can remember where I even put them. Did I put them here? Ha! Ah, got lucky. There we go. Yeah, I shouldn't need that many. <laughs> okay. So... You can see it wouldn't allow me to craft any ingots because I didn't have any craft kits. So you got to get craft kits from somewhere. And let me go back to my inventory real quick. All right. Apparently, they are tradable because it doesn't say they're not. So you could probably even go to the trade broker if you have to. Uh, and as a matter of fact, it says average brokerage sale, one gold, six. Seven. But I would look at the prices. Most of the time when someone puts something like this, it's real common in the trade broker. They try to charge more than what it would cost you to go and buy it from the vendor. So always do your comparison shopping, even between the trade broker and the vendor who sells them. Now, if you just don't feel like you're here and you don't feel like going and looking for it or whatever, and you're willing to spend the extra money through the trade broker, if it costs more than trade, go for it, whatever. But, but I always recommend comparison shopping because sometimes people will throw common things in the trade broker that you can buy from regular NPC vendors, but they'll be charging more through the trade broker. So in that case, go buy it from the vendor. All right, so we have our craft kit. We're trying to make ingots because, again, and anytime you want, you see it still says promotion task up there, and it has the Y button for Xbox. It'll tell you PlayStation button if you're on PlayStation. Anytime I want, I can hit that Y button and see what I need to do. And see what my progress is. Matter of fact, I already told you we need to make 10, or we need to craft 10 ingots. Now I have my materials. I have the ball of ore and I have my craft kits. I don't have to use an additive. Uh, 
it's possible to add it if I happen to have some, but for those of you who get confused when you see that, you don't need an add it. It simply gives you an increased chance for, for a crit bonus. Now, I am, I need to craft 10 of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to make five. Oh, six, because I was, you know, clicking a little too quickly and then hit my A button. So I'm making six. That's fine. Okay, now, I'm like, okay, well, I made some. How many more do I need? So I can hit my Y button again and go straight into that again. And you can see that I made six, but I get two points each time. So I'm now at 12 points out of 20, which means I need eight points, but I get two points each. So I need to make four more. Again, I have no clue what I didn't just set it up to say you need, you know, to make 10, but whatever. So what did I say? I need, so I need to craft four more of them. Three, four, because yeah, you can put how many, you don't have to craft all that's possible. You just, I mean, even if I wanted to craft just one, I just tell it all. I just want to craft one. So, you know, you, you select your number, how many you need to craft. And remember, artisan tests, I don't need skill gain. It says skill only zero, but I, but I only needed the skill gain to get up to smelting basic 500. When you're doing the actual testing for artisan or for master, skill gain is not a thing. It's the test itself. So now I'm like, okay, now what did I do? Oh, I can hit my Y button on the Xbox and check my progress. Now, for ingots, I'm now 20 out of 20. I have completed the ingots requirement. And if you look down at the bottom, my overall progress meter says I'm 50% of the way to artisan. So now I need to create fish or craft fish crate once. I need 20 points. Each one is going to give me 10 points. That means all I got to do now is craft two fish crate once. I have enough to make 11, but I don't need 11. I'm going to make two. Now keep your eyes open. Watch. You hear the horns, you see I got a, a feet down there. It's an art, and I got my resource specialist choker. So, and if you look in the upper left corner, where it used to say smelting basic, it now says smelting artisan. And I now have skill 500 out of 800, because now that I'm at the artisan level, I can continue to increase my level. And now that I am an artisan, any, let's see, did we have... Okay, uh, like the Golden Derrick here. I need 500 skill. Earlier when I was basic and didn't have 500 skill, I wasn't an artisan yet. Even if I had been basic 500, it wouldn't have mattered. Because anytime you see that skill needed 500, it actually means artisan level 500, not basic level 500. So, but now if I wanted to, I could go and get the design for a gold. Matter of fact, because I know, all right, I, and I have to be a master to become a golden plate. And I am... Not in the right place to do that. Oh. All right. I'm going to grab this. This is the current uh, daily event that's going on. That has nothing to do with that. But uh, if I go into my parcel post, you see I get a feat reward for becoming an artisan. There's my resource specialist choker that it said I would get. And the resource specialist choker I cover in the um, gathering video because it actually gives you a bonus for gathering, uh, but it doesn't help you with crafting, so I'm not going to go into it right here. So, actually, because I will need them later, I am going to go ahead and fast travel back to... I, I just love crafting Kytor. I'm going to Kytor. Uh, because I want to buy uh, the higher-level designs. I, I didn't buy them earlier. Again, I was standing here crafting by the beach, out in the field, anywhere. You can craft anywhere you want as long as you already know the design and as long as you can get your hands on the materials to actually craft it. But because I want to get into some higher level, artisan level crafting, but I haven't learned the design for it yet, well, now I have to go somewhere to buy the design, which, like I said, any of the four major capital cities... Um, 
you go to wherever their crafting shops are. You saw the one in Velika with that one quest we did earlier. And this is the one in Kayator. And I'm looking for smelting designs. So I have to see a smelting vendor. See, process. Okay, smelting is over here. You see the labels read by these do smelting. These do processing, you know, over here. And the other shop was where we had like etching and whatever else. And again, all right, let me, let me go over this again, because I cannot stress this enough. Uh, th this, this can mess you up. Uh, Golden Derricks. There are two in the same crafting area. Golden Plates, two in the same crafting area. So I want to look at this Golden Derrick. I need skill level 500 to, to do these Golden Derricks. These Golden Derricks, I don't need any skill level. But these Golden Derricks, I'm going to get one Derrick for 20 production points. These ones, I'm going to get three Derricks for only 15 production points. But I need the skill level to get this one. Again, like I talked about earlier, that was because some people were saying they, with all the enchanting events and whatever, they wanted to be able to craft things like Golden Derricks, Golden Plates, I believe, Silver Siglo, Silver Plates, without having to be Artisan or Master because they only have like one character and they already have a, a Artisan or a Master in that. So they weren't able to do it because you can only be a Master in one craft. And you can only be an artisan in one craft. You can be a master in one craft and an artisan in one craft. But some of these things that were wanting to do things that required master level. So they added these extra uh, designs. So always be careful which design you're getting ready to buy and to learn. Okay, that, And you can see it in your crafting menu. Like I said, if you check your crafting menu and you see there are two different ones, you're like, oh, let me be careful. So when I go in here and do my actual shopping for my design you can see i have a design for golden derrick if you look at the description in the middle there it doesn't tell me anything about needing any skill level but if i go down and look at this design for a golden derrick it tells me i need to be at least skill level 500 artists and above which i am this is the one i want because i showed you in the crafting menu if you buy the other one that doesn't require any skill level it's going to cost you a, more production points for less crafting materials that you're going to get out of it. So you'll burn through a lot of uh, uh, extra production points and end up with less materials. So if you're actually an artisan or a master, uh, and you and that's why you're buying the design, be sure you buy the correct one that actually requires you to have that skill level, and it will it will give you more crafting materials with less production points being wasted. And the same thing with the golden plate. I'm going to buy the golden plate, even though I'm not a master yet. I'm just to have it in my inventory so I don't have to come back. And I do want to cover these at the same time. Golden plate. It doesn't tell me anything about I need to be a master. And I already showed you in the crafting menu. One of the golden plate designs is going to cost me more production points and give me less crafting materials at the end. But if I go to this design that tells me that I must be a smelting level 800 master or above, that's the one I want. Less production points, more crafting materials produced. Okay, so this is the one I want. I don't want the one that's going to burn through a bunch of production points and only give me a few materials. So now to have them, I want to learn my golden derrick. So again, I have to go into my menu, the part of the menu that looks like a box up there. Golden derrick is the one... You can see in the middle in the description where I need to be 500 artists or above, which I am. Let me learn it. Now let me try the golden plate here. There we go. You don't meet the requirements to learn that design. Now for golden plate, it allows me to buy it. So I can go ahead and buy it and have my inventory ready to go. But because it says down there that I have to be a level 800 master or above, it's not going to let me learn it because I'm not a master yet. Right. But it is a mandatory, ready to go for later. So now we can go back into our crafting. And you'll recall when we first were basic and we had like three you know, experience points for this, what we did was we went through and we looked at what we can get a lot for our skill gain. Now, I have, now that I've learned the Golden Derricks, I can see that each Golden Derrick, every time I craft it, it's going to give me 
three derricks, and it's going to give me a skill gain of plus five. And again, because I have the elite gold, which gives you something like an extra 150% bonus for your skill gain, I'll actually go up in skill much more quickly than if I didn't have elite gold. Now, you can see that I have quite a few craft kits down there because I had pulled the extras out of my uh, uh, bank. But I did not show you properly because I don't even remember what it was. But I also need five golden talents for every time that I want to to create three golden derricks. So for every strike, I'm going to use up five golden talents and it's going to create three golden derricks for me. So let's head back to the bank because I, I happen to have some golden talents because they are very, very common drops. I had, I always have a bunch of these, uh, especially since I hunt world bands and stuff like that. Let's see. And, and if you open bonus material box four, Four is Roman numeral IV. You can actually find those in the trade broker. Bonus material box four, but it's an IV instead of number four. Uh, if you get some of those boxes, which drop from some of the, the dungeons and stuff, you can check the dungeon list, see where they're. If you open some of those, you can get things like uh, golden talents and silver talents and things. You know, so you can get a little bunch of them that way as well. Or just get the drops from the dungeons if you happen to be one of those people who actually does dungeons. Or if you're like me and you're a solo player, you don't do dungeons, but you uh, hunt world bands a lot, then you know you get some of these things like that that way. All right, so I got a few golden talents out of my bank. And I, just to show, I don't actually need to be in that room as long as I have the stuff that I need. All right, so now I can craft a bunch of golden derricks for one. And each of them will give me five skill gain. But normally you will look first and be like, oh, okay. If I try to make these, they won't give me any extra skill. Okay, because those are basic things. So now that I'm an artisan, those don't give me any kind of skill. Fish crate one, again, I'm already an artisan. So, so the basic little low level ones won't give me any skill. Now, if I were to go learn fish crate three, I could get skill gains of three. I'm personally saving up as many fishing tokens as I can to continue uh, upgrading both of my fishing rods. So I don't, I'm not going to get fish crate three. And event items, again, that only happens during particular times of the year, and they don't give you skill anyway. So my best bet, actually, I already knew it. That's why I went, and went for it. Golden Derricks are going to give me five skill gain for each strike. And let me make 300. And, I have materials for 330. You said, let me go back. Because I think I might be able to finally show you this. Yellow number 330. That means I have enough materials, golden talents, and craft kits to craft 330 times. Okay, I'll be crafting three golden derricks each time I do it. So it actually end up with 990 golden derricks in the end uh, if, if I can actually craft 330. Now, like I said, when you tell it how many you're going to craft, I'm going to tell it 600. Because you can, you can put a big nut. Now, 140 is all it's going to let me do because of my production points. This is the point I was talking about earlier. Uh, when you put a huge number in there that's higher than whatever the number was you saw on the, on the first menu, it's still going to default to how many you can actually craft overall. Now, in this particular menu, I only have enough production points to create 140. So when you see that number over here telling you that you can make 330 golden derricks, right there where it's highlighted that is what you have materials to craft so i have enough materials to craft 330 golden dares but it cost me 15 production points for each time you can see that right there next to where i have it highlighted production cost is 15 each time down at the bottom i only have 2105 production points left so when i go here if I go ahead and put a number larger than what 330 was, again, I'll just put like 600. Now it tells me I can only craft 140 because this is the point where it takes into account how many production points I have as well as how many materials I have. So 140 is all I have enough for production points. So uh, let's go ahead and get started on that. And wait a minute. Okay. Yeah, I have 140. And again, all I'm doing is increasing my skill level. I'm already an artisan. Upper left corner, even though it's faded out, you can see the word crafting. Oh, I got a bonus material. Your exceptional crafting work produced bonus materials. And you see at the lower right corner, golden derrick five. Whenever I get a crit on this, normally it gives me three golden derricks for each strike. 
if you get a critical hit on uh, these golden derricks instead for that one hit, instead of three golden derricks, it'll give you five golden derricks. So every time you see that crit bonus message come up, it'll give you um, basically two extra golden derricks for that particular strike because it's giving you five instead of the normal three. In the lower right corner, I'm now smelting artisan um, feet has been completed and it gave me an extra 50 gold uh, because when you hit certain levels with your crash it, I'll do the theme menu later I should have done that at the beginning okay but again uh, upper left corner and you see the word crafting you know it's kind of ghosted out just below it's melting artisan and you can barely barely see it if you look real close maybe not in the video but if, you, but if you're on your TV screen I can actually see that I currently have 764 776 crafting points out of 800. 788, we're almost done. You can advance your craft. Now I want to stop production, stop producing, because you saw I'm no longer getting skill gain. I'm now 800 out of 800. And it told me that I can um, take my test for master. Now, you'll see before, I, I, I didn't think to look for it earlier. Uh, after, you know, we became an artisan or whatever, I was talking before about how you can be an artisan in only one craft. You can be a master in only one craft. Now, say you are an artisan in one craft and you want to become an artisan in a different craft and you're willing to give up your artisan status. Like, I don't want to be a smelting artisan anymore. I want to go ahead and just be basic with it because I want to be an artisan in something else. You'll see near the upper right corner there of, of our crafting menu, reset rank. It tells me to click down on my right joystick. And now it asks me, reset this crafting rank. Once reset, your crafting school rank will drop to 500 and knowledge of advanced recipes will all be deleted. Revival fruit, one, required. You currently have zero. So, I showed you before in the um, um, crafting vendors where most of them sell a revival fruit. If you're going to reduce your rank, like right now it tells me it'll drop me down to 500. And all my advanced recipes will be deleted. I won't have knowledge of the advanced recipes anymore because I won't be at that skill level. But I must first go to one of the crafting vendors and buy a revival fruit from them because I need that to be able to do this. Okay, so now I'm just going to I just wanted to show you that. So if you ever do get stuck where you're either an artisan or a master and you're like, oh, man, I only got this one character. I've been a master in this thing for a while, but now I need to be a master in this other thing. And I'm willing to give up my mastery of this one. You know, so then you would go ahead and um, do that process that I just showed you with resetting your rank. But what we're actually working on now is we went from basic to artisan. Now we got enough points to be at the highest level of smelting artisan. We're 800 out of 800. And again, you see the promotion test. And again, on Xbox, it's a Y button. PlayStation will tell you what button to hit. Now, you must pass the test to advance to Smelting Master. Up to one crafting skill can be increased to Master. Would you like to take the test? And again, I, I think I've covered enough. You can be a Master in only one craft. You can be an Artisan in only one craft. And this is what I need to do to become a Smelting Master. I need to earn 60 points by crafting Golden Derricks. But each time I craft a Golden Derrick, I'm going to get 5 points. Which means I need to craft 12 golden derricks. Again, I don't know why they didn't just say you need to craft gold, 12 golden derricks and put 0 out of 12, but whatever. Alright, so golden derricks, I need to craft 12. I was not in a party. Oh, I accidentally had a party thing earlier, but don't worry about it. Okay, I need 12. I have way more than enough. I can make a lot more, but I'm only going to make 12 because all I'm trying to do is become a smelting master. So I'll go ahead and craft 12 golden derricks. And again, because we're taking the test for master, the fact that it says skill gain zero makes no difference at all. The skill gain is only to get your points from 1 up to 500 from basic to artisan and then from 500 to 800 from artisan to master. But when you're taking the actual tests, you simply do whatever the test tells you to do.
And you hear the horns blowing, and you see at the lower right, I got a beat for a smelting master. They gave me 100 gold for it. Upper left corner, under crafting, you see it now in big old yellow letters. It says that I am a smelting master with skill 800 and 800. And again, this is the golden plate recipe. There's two, and I only want the one where I need to be a master. You've not learned this recipe yet. And you'll recall, I went ahead and bought the recipe earlier when, or design, whatever you call it, um, when I bought the one for the Golden Derricks. And I tried to learn the design for Golden Plate, but it wouldn't allow me because I was only an artisan at the time. Now, I'm going to my design for my Golden Plate. And again, this is the design for where I have to be a master. I don't want that design that doesn't have a requirement to be a master because, again, you waste a lot of production points and get very little crafting material unless you're doing it and you're willing to do it simply because you're mastering something else and you really want to craft these things, you know. Uh, although you might be better off going and checking the trade broker or whatever for the kind of production points you're going to use and a little bit of actual crafting materials you're going to get from it. You know, it's one of the things you got to look at for yourself. But we bought the design for the golden plate earlier. I have to be a master. I was only an artisan. It would not allow me to learn it when I tried before. Now I'm going to try to learn it. Yeah, uh huh? Hello. It let me learn golden plate now. Because now I am a crafting master in smelting. And, and you can see because I happen to have the materials, I have some golden derricks on hand and I have some craft kits. At this point now, if I wanted to make some golden plates, I could because, hey, now I'm a master and I've learned the design. Now I can make it. Okay. I believe in this video, we initially went through uh, two crafting quests that I know of where even if you forget everything you saw in this video, if you go do those quests, they will show you the basics of crafting and it might help refresh your memory. So you can learn crafting by just doing either one of those quests. Uh, one was in Velika, uh, one was in Kyator. We went over some of the buffs, like Moongord Pies and Kastanika Midnight Oils. If you have gold and silver elite status, you, you get certain buffs through crafting. Uh, oh, one important thing I forgot to mention, because I did write notes. I don't I do not do a script. I never do. I just start yapping, and sometimes I yap a little too long, but whatever. That, that's why I have that warning under every one of my videos. If you don't like long explanatory videos, don't watch my videos. <laughs> okay. One thing important I forgot, production points. We went over a lot of the production point things. And a matter of fact, um, because I wanted to actually demonstrate, you can see that right now we've used up a bunch of production points. We have 1,580 left out of a maximum of 4,300. In our inventory, we had, I think we're near the bottom. You know what? For a minute, we had Crafter's Curl. That'll restore 4,000 production points. But if I use that, I will waste a lot of it because I only need, like, what, 2,500 or so to, to get back to max. It will not give me more production that numbers than what that maximum number is. So if I take this one right now, I will waste a lot because I'm not low enough. However, Fermented Moonlight Fruit will restore 500 production points. Or even a uh, regular Elenu's tier, not to age, because that's 4,000. Regular Elenu's tier would restore 1,000. I am more than 1,000 below the maximum, so I could actually take this without wasting anything. But, just to see it, because I already forgot what the... Okay, so we're at 1,580 out of 4,300. Take one fermented moonlight fruit which will give me 500 production points. And now my remaining production points have immediately jumped up to 2008. Okay? So that's what I was talking about earlier with those particular potables or things that you can drink. Uh, they immediately restore production points. And you can see we're at 2095. We can go up to 4,300. I go into my inventory again. And it's not doing all these tier because I still have a thousand available there. But just because I saw it, it does remind you that it recovers your production points. 
production points cannot exceed 4,300. Do you still want to use this item? So it even gives you a warning. Hey, your max is 4,300. Be sure you're not going over your max because we're not going to give you more points than your max. Okay, so, but we are uh, taking an eldest here for 1,000 points. And now I go back and look at my production points. Now I'm up to 3,095 production points. Okay, so you can use uh, those uh, particular things to get your production points back up. And the reason I have partial posts, uh, when you get those feet rewards like that, all that gave me was 50 gold. And that gave me 100 gold for getting master. Uh, some of the rewards for feats show, uh, go to your partial posts. They get emailed to you or whatever in here in your partial post. So when you see it highlighted, don't forget to go check it to go grab your rewards or whatever. All right, so... What was that that I just covered? Okay. The important thing, I got sidetracked again. The important thing I wanted to mention, because I started talking about production points. Your production points are shared by all of your characters on that same gamer tag. Now you can see we're at 3,095 out of 4,300. If you go to any other character on your gamer tag right now, you're still going to be, for them, at 3,095. Okay, so it's not like my Archer gets 4,300 production points and my Brawler gets 4,300 and my Ninja and my uh, whatever else, because I have every kind of class there is. Um, they all share that same production point pool. So don't think that you're going to go on your Reaper and burn through your 4,300 production points and then you're going to go over to your Sorceress and continue on because no. Your sources will also be at zero if you took your, you know, other than a little five or ten that you may have gained while you were waiting in between. Because, like I said, the production points continue to go up. Right now we're at thirty ninety five. Yeah, still thirty ninety five. It takes a little while, um, but yeah, they're all shared on the same gamer tag by all your characters. So you cannot do it now. If you happen to have multiple gamer tags like me. Then you could actually, you know, go use one of your gamer tags for gathering, burn through all those 4,300 production points. They can go ahead and partial post all the materials they gathered to this gamer tag. Well, this gamer tag hasn't been doing any gathering and crafting, so this will still have 4,300. And they can go ahead and start crafting the based on the materials that were sent to them from the other gamer tag. So that if you happen to have more than one gamer tag, one of the benefits of that is the production point thing because... Of course, each gamer tag is separate, so it's they're all going to have forty three hundred of their own, you know. But but again, on one gamer tag, no matter how I got twenty two characters on this one, and no matter which character I go to right now, it's going to say I've got three thousand ninety five production points available. And if I burn through these and I get down to zero, no matter which character I go to on this gamer tag, I'm going to have zero unless I take one of those photos I showed showed you, or unless I wait until they start building back up. Yeah, I was hoping it would go up one, but but I did show that earlier anyway. We, we actually got to see where we went down by 5 and 10, and then it went back up uh, a little bit later. Okay, so in the video, I think we covered the two quests that I know of for crafting, which gives you some free uh, designs. You don't have to pay for them, and it gives you the basics of how to craft. So even if you forget what you saw in the video, you just go see one of them, do the quest. I don't know at what level you will be when they show up. She's level 65. They are there uh, with the quest available. Uh, I have a level 17. I just recently deleted one of my extra characters and started a new one. Just took them through steps to now, done nothing else. She went to those two spots. They do not have the quests available for her. So I don't know if you have to be level 65 for those quests show up or if it happens sometime between 17 and 65. But again, I recommend... If you are still leveling up, you're not even level 65, uh, worry more about your quests and actually getting to level 65 first, then start worrying about things like crafting or whatever. Especially since for me, you know, people talk about the end game. Oh, multiplayer dungeons, that's end game. No, not for me. I don't even do multiplayer dungeons. My end game is my crafting and my fishing and my enchanting. And I do do the solo dungeons and I do hunt world bands. So I do other stuff like that, you know. Uh, but for some reason, some people seem to think the only thing that happens in this game is multiplayer dungeons, and they miss out on all the other cool stuff they could be doing. But uh, I 
am not a multiplayer dungeon person because I'm a solo player. Obviously, if I did multiplayer dungeons, I couldn't call myself myself a solo gamer anymore. I'd have to change my YouTube name because then I'm a hanging out with the crowd gamer or whatever. But I think we covered everything in this video. Uh, we talked about production points. We talked about the kind of potables you can get to increase your production points instantly. We talked about the buffs you get from the Moon Gourd Pies, the Casanica Midnight Oils, Elite Gold or Silver status. Uh, showed you with the Entropic Emblems and the Metamorphic Emblems how you can get, uh, you can buy Elnus Tears and Age Elnus Tears through them. We talked about the Trade Broker, uh, where you can buy things like Elnus Tears and Crafters Cure Alls. And remember to do your comparison shopping. Because you've got two different things that do exactly the same thing. Look at the prices for both. Because one of them may be a whole lot cheaper than the other. Just like it was today when we looked at it. And we talked about the uh, reagents uh, to, to increase your possibility of a crit. We got to see a few crits. And, and we got to see how you check for what your... Uh, oh, wait, of course it's not going to be one of those. But anyway, we, we did that earlier. Uh, you can check and see where your crit possibilities are. And I believe that pretty much is everything. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned a little bit of something somewhere, maybe a little tip or trick that you weren't aware of before. Or if you've never done any crafting, then hopefully this will help you along the way, uh, get you started. So, until next time, enjoy Terra and happy gaming.